in accordance with Governor Cuomo's order 202.1. And until further notice, all of the board's meetings will be held remotely. So we ask the public to continually check the town's website for updates and new information. There are also options on the website for public comments and to pre-register to speak on public hearings. So please consider that for all future meetings. If you wish to view tonight's live meeting only, please do not join the Zoom meeting. Please go to the town's meeting portal, choose the meeting group from the drop down on the left and click on the live link at the top of the page. If you wish to be heard during a meeting, but did not pre-register, please go to the town's meeting portal, choose the meeting group from the drop down on the left, and you will find the information required to join the Zoom meeting. With that, I'd ask that you join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag, flag of the United States, United States, America, States America, of America and to the Republic, and the Republic for which it stands, which stands one nation, one nation under, under, God, under God, indivisible, indivisible with liberty and justice, and justice, justice, justice for all. For all. We will be starting this meeting with the public hearings. We have applicants and members of the public standing by via Zoom webinar, which is being moderated by CTV. Charles Certain will mute the speakers until it is their time to give testimony before the board. Please be patient. If you find that you are having difficulties accessing, accessing the hearings, please visit the town clerk's meeting portal and click on the instructions link. Board members who must recuse themselves from any application will state so on the record and will be removed from the meeting until the end of the hearing. Also, there are a few public hearings and decisions that will not be heard tonight, meaning they're gonna be adjourned. So please listen to hear when they will be rescheduled for. A reminder that applicants, agents, and members of the public speaking, other than attorneys, will be sworn in, will state their address for the record, and will offer their testimony as it relates to the application before the board. Members of the public are typically given a three minute time limit on their testimony, so please keep that in mind. Unless otherwise stated at the end of each hearing, all of these applications will remain open for written comments for all purposes until June 3rd, 2021, when they can be sent via email, mail, and or dropped off at town hall. Additionally, in accordance with the governor's order, these hearings will be recorded and will be posted on the town's website. And with that, I would ask for a motion to approve the minutes of our last meeting. Second. Um, Ms. Kern. Aye. Mr. DeSessa. Aye. Mr. Daly. Aye. Mr. Tuthill. Uh, I wasn't here for the last meeting, but I was fortunate enough to be able to bring myself up to speed with the last meeting, so I vote aye. Ms. Burgess. Aye. Mr. Kelly. Aye. Chair votes aye. Also, we welcome Mr. Tressa to the meeting uh, tonight. Thank you for once again Thank joining us. Thanks, Thanks for having me. All right, so minutes are approved, and uh, next uh, we will go on to adjournments. Okay, there are some adjournments and changes in the agenda. <laughs> Item four on the agenda, which is Matthew Lucas, 38 Bayview Drive East, the Noyak, Suffolk County Tax Map 900-9-3-82. I'm gonna to move to re-advertise that for our 617 meeting. Second. Mr. Tuthill. Aye. Mr. DeSessa. Aye. Ms. Kern. Aye. Ms. Burgess. Aye. Mr. Daly. Aye. Mr. Kelly. Aye. Chair votes aye. Item five, the agenda is Joseph Voltus to Roses Grove Road, the Northeast Suffolk County Tax Map 900 33 3 1. I'll move to re advertise that for our 617 meeting. And you know what? I realized we don't have to vote, it's a re ad. So uh, both Lucas and Voltus, we are, are re advertising them. There doesn't need to be a vote. There is. Doesn't need to be a motion either. <laughs> well, no, we, we put it on the record that it's being re advertised, but we don't have to vote on it. Item 10, 11, and 12. Um, I'm going to move that we adjourn that to our uh, 617 meeting. 
Second. Mr. Tuthill. Aye. Mr. DeSessa. Aye. Ms. Burgess. Aye. Ms. Kern. Aye. Mr. Kelly. Aye. Mr. Daly. Aye. Chair Votai. Been, been on the decision calendar. Uh, two Peconic Crescent LLC. I move to reopen to accept written submissions. Second. Mr. Tuthill. Aye. Mr. Kelly. Aye. Mr. Daly. Aye. Um, Ms. Kern. Aye. Um, Ms. Burgess. Aye. Mr. DeSessa. Aye. Do you have a tie to reopen? Uh, now, after accepting the written submissions, I'll move to close with a determination later on this evening. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, Diego and Marlene Quisby. Um, we're going to have that decision on 6 3, and the same for Barbara Swislowski. That'll be on 6 3, and Frank Freddie will be on 6 3. And I think also 85 Eastway. <laughs> well, nobody told me that. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. 85 Eastway also. Okay. So, All four. All right. Do we have a second? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And Patrick ba Bradley, uh, I'm moving to reopen for written submissions. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. We have, we have a second. Second. Uh, Mr. Tuthill. Aye. Mr. Daly. Aye. Mr. Kelly. Aye. Ms. Burgess. Aye. Ms. Kern. Aye. Mr. DeSessa. Aye. Chair Votai. Now I'll move to close with a determination later this evening. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. And then, uh, We'll just, we have uh, Edward Burke Jr. and Patricia Burke. We're going to uh, have a discussion about that when we get to the decision calendar. How is that? Well, we're going to have a discussion now. Yep. You want to have it now? Reopen. Yeah. Yeah. We, so we'll why don't we move to reopen? All right. Move Second. <laughs> okay. Uh, Mr. Tuthill. Aye. <laughs> Mr. DeTessa. Aye. Mr. Daly. Aye. Um, Ms. Burgess. Aye. Ms. Kern. Aye. Ms. Kelly. Aye. Gerald Tsai, it is reopened. And so we received uh, a written submission um, and a request from the uh, agent for the, or the attorney for the applicant, um, Mr. Kiley. Um, so apparently they're looking to add a second floor studio to the detached garage on the property and they submitted plans and they are asking for pyramid relief in the amount of 1,080 cubic feet. And they're trying to have it be part of the decision under any other relief necessary. But it, this application was not you know, advertised or noticed to the neighbors for pyramid relief. Um, if it was a really small amount of pyramid relief, I would say maybe under any other relief necessary. But to me, 1,080 cubic feet is not a really small amount. Um, not a huge amount, uh, but I, in, in my view, it's enough to, to at least have the neighbors notified, but that's just me. So I'm not sure where other board members are on that. I, I agree. I, with you, Adam. I, agree. I agree as well. All right. So I think we're going to, we're going to need to have them uh, re-advertised. Yeah. And what date will that be, Candace? Um, you can do... You can do June seventeenth. Have enough time. Okay. So we re-advertise, and uh, we're going to continue the public hearing. I would think um, so to get testimony on uh, on the pyramid relief. Great. I'll make Mr. Grossman, Mr. What about the apartment above the garage? Yes. Yes, uh, Keith. <clears throat> I am thinking along the same lines. Helen was is that going to be an accessory apartment? Above the garage or what? Well, that's what we can ask them. Among the things we can ask okay. them. Okay. Yeah, well, yeah. They need it. If well, they, sure. they, that's what it is. They need to advertise for it and get it done and over with. If it's a, if they're intentional. None of the neighbors, none of the neighbors proposed any uh, 
opposition to this application, just so you get so you guys know. Right, right. Yeah, but they're asking just for relief in their in the submission for pyramid. And we can ask them about what their intentions are with the, with the structure. Well, so, okay. And, and the yeah, building the building department, the building department will review it before we advertise it. So if there's anything else, you know, that needs to be captured, that'll be advertised. Yep. It'll be captured. Correct. <laughs> All right. So we're gonna move along now. We're gonna go okay, back to well, the beginning. Hold on. We, have, we have to vote. We have to vote on that. Okay. So um uh Keith, you made a motion. I second. Okay. Uh, Mr. Todd Hill. Hi. Mr. Vicessa. Hi. Mr. Daly. Hi. Ms. Kern. Hi. Ms. Burgess. Hi. Mr. Kelly. Hi. Joe votes aye. All right, we're going to go back to the beginning of the agenda for item one, which is Baycrest 2 LLC or Baycrest 11, I'm sorry. 38A Baycrest Avenue in West Ham, Suffolk County tax map. 900-358-2-27.2. This is a minor variance review. Applicant requests relief from town code 330-11 residential districts table of dimension regulations for a principal rear yard setback of 70 feet where 54.2 feet is required for a proposed covered porch addition to an existing dwelling and a non-conforming lot and any other relief necessary. Uh, the board has jurisdiction and for the record i just wanted to say it it was reversed it's 54.2 feet where 70 feet is uh required yes. we had written it up a little wrong yes yes i noticed that as well anyway. okay so um no public hearing um uh, helen it is yours uh, well since there's no public hearing there'll be a decision uh at the end of the hearing uh, second decision tonight yes tonight mm -hmm. okay all right all right do we have a second Second. Ms. Burgess. Aye. Mr. Sessa. Aye. Mr. Daly. <coughs> Aye. Mr. Tuthill. Aye. Ms. Kern. Aye. Mr. Kelly. I recuse myself on this application. Okay. And Chair votes aye. All right. Item two on the agenda under new applications is Lawrence Prager, 628 Head Upon Road, Watermill, Suffolk County Tax Map 900-101-1. Dash 10.3. Applicant requests relief from the following provisions of the town code for proposed 110 by 55 tennis court and a non conforming lot. One, 330 11 residential districts table of dimension regulations for an accessory uh, distance from street setback for yard of 62 feet where 70 feet is required. And two, 330 77D. Placement of accessory building structures and uses in residence districts for proposed rear yard coverage of 22.2%, where a maximum of 20% is permitted, and any other relief necessary. Board has jurisdiction. We're looking for Bruce Anderson or other, oh, yes, yep. Bruce. Bruce is right there. Good evening, Bruce. Good evening. Just have to swear you in. <laughs> Just have to swear you in. State your name and address for the record, please. Bruce Anderson, Suffolk Environmental Consulting, Inc., Main Road, Bridgehampton. And do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, sir, I do. Thank you. You can tell us about the application. Okay, this is an application where the property owner proposes to construct a uh, 55 by 110 tennis court in the rear yard of a property. This property contains 1.3 acres. It is entitled to CR 40 setbacks is, as the subject parcel is lot four of the minor subdivision of Theodore F. Squires filed March 22nd, 1984. Um, it's a flag lot and the setbacks uh, uh, and the front line is its westerly lot line. If we could just put up the survey, we can kind of walk through the yards on this. One second. So the survey is in front of you. Uh, if you can sort of reduce that, we can see that. Uh, yeah, it's just too big. That's good. So the uh, the front lot line is the westerly lot line. It's where the front doors of the house face. 
Um, the rear lot line is the opposite lot line, and the remaining two lot lines are the side lot lines. The board should take notice that the off the rear lot line um, is an approximate seven acre parcel for which the county of Suffolk and the town of Southampton have purchased development rights. Um, also, the board should take notice that parcel number one, which is depicted to the left of the parcel, is separated from the front lot line by two 20 foot uh, flag lots. And parcel two, which is to the northwest of the parcel, is separated from the front lot line by one 20 foot flag strip line. You should also take notice that the proposed tennis court uh, complies with the side yard setback of 20 feet to the north and the 20 foot setback to the rear lot line to the east. Uh, the corner calculates at 62 feet from the front lot line, which is also depicted on the survey. And so when you comply with the front and the rear lot, I'm sorry, with the rear lot line and the side lot line, what happens is the, the property becomes constrained as to lot depth. And that is um, our practical hardship in this case. So we're asking for uh, authorizing setbacks from the front lot line at 62 feet where 70 feet is required and we're asking for coverage in the required rear yard of 22.2% or 20% is required. Now, if we can go to the aerial of the neighborhood, we can describe that. And what you see is the lot. We've superimposed the tennis court on that. And you can see to the east is the, uh, 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 is the farmland that's protected with development rights. You can see the parcel to the north, uh, which contains a dwelling and, and pool or accessory structures. The parcel to the northwest, which also contains a dwelling and accessory structures. And Bruce, the parcel are, you sharing, are you guys sharing your screen? We don't have that. Yeah, I'm seeing it. I don't oh, see you it. Are? I don't see it. I just see the survey. Oh, it's, yeah. That's all I got. I just see the survey. So, so why? Hang on. I, why don't you stop the share and then share the second one? Yeah. Oh, all right. Stop the first I'll one. Stop it. And now share the one that you have up now. Okay. I'm sorry. Here we go. Here we go. Can everyone see that? Thank you. So you yep. see the farmland to the yeah. east? Yeah. And you see the surrounding residents to the north, northwest, and west. And we Showing you where the uh, proposed tennis court is. Um, now, if we can go to the second aerial, uh, we're going to stop this. If it's just an enlargement of that, so we can look at it for a little more detail. There we go. That's it. Whoop. Can you see that? Yep. Yes. Yes. Okay. So in that aerial, what we're showing is the distance between the tennis court and the adjacent residences. So you will see that the um, court is 108 feet from the residence to the north, 185 feet to the residence to the northwest, and 215 feet to the residence to the uh, west. You also will take notice That's that Bruce, the Bruce, uh, Bruce, 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 that screen's yes. already there between the uh, it's not there. The tennis court and that house up there, 108 at 108. The screen's already there. No. Yes, correct. Yes. Okay. All right. And you're also densely from, the from those directions. Okay. Correct. All right. And so Go ahead. Uh, our point in showing you that is that it's, it is our view that there would be no impact to the character of the neighborhood uh, because the property is well screened. And also, we, uh, particularly the property of the north, we achieve the 20 foot setback, which is an as of right setback. And of course, there would be no impact to the surrounding uh, farmland. 
we submit the relief is not substantial because we're only asking for 2.2% of the required relief in the rear yard and only uh, uh, eight feet for the front uh, uh, lot line, which is 11% of the uh, requirement. And we say that we submit that the grant of variance will not have an adverse effect on the physical environmental uh, condition of the site because the relief from the rear lot coverage would, would have no impact to the farmland and the screening protects the properties that surround it. Um, our hardship is not created because due to the practical hardship of a, of a limited lot depth. And then finally, as part of our application, we provided you with uh, five uh, other applications that we, we uh, handled in this office. And we point out that in each of these applications, the board required the uh, tennis court be reduced in size to 55 by uh, 110 feet, which is consistent with the application before you. And we also uh, provide in these applications relief a tennis court for uh, the required rear yard at 22.9% uh, for the Stern parcel, 24.9% for the Markwoods parcel, 25.5% for the Fischetti parcel, 31.4% for the Seagerman parcel, and 41% for the Melander parcel. I believe we handled each of these variances. I can go into them in greater detail, but the point here is the relief we're requesting here is at 22% is less than those variances. So in conclusion, it's our contention that the benefit to the applicant if the variances were granted would outweigh any detriment to the public health, safety, and welfare of the neighborhood or community. Our benefit would be the ability to construct a tennis court harming, harming no one and we believe and submit that there is no detriment to the health, safety, and welfare of the neighborhood or community as a result of the grant of variance. So final note, also uh, enclosed in your application package is a letter of support um, from um, uh, a Kerry John McWinney who resides at 628 Head Upon Road, which is across the street uh, from the parcel. I'm here to answer any questions you may have. Have you heard from the neighbor to the north, Bruce? Uh, they called, they didn't, they're not expressing any um, objection to the uh, tennis court. I did not speak with them, Matt Ivins of my office did. Because okay, they're the most impact. Um, my, other, my other question um, is uh, the screening that presently exists is shown on the, uh, what's, what's on the screen right now, um, the aerial. Um, uh, would your uh, would the applicant agree to maintain the, the screening as it presently exists? Yes. Okay. Well, I mean, the amount, the, the percentage of rear yard lot coverage is certainly below what we grant um, in, you know, from from time to time, um, and the fact that the, the to the east is uh, farmland means that, you know, areas to the east that otherwise arguably may have been impacted by the tennis court wouldn't be. So really, in my view, you know, the only parcels that are impacted or could be impacted are the neighbors <laughs> to the north and arguably the, the one, uh, you know, the, the two neighbors to, to the, I guess, the southwest and northwest. <laughs> okay. Um, so that's all I have. Any other questions of members of the board? I have no problem with this project. Just a reminder, this board never sets precedents. Each case has its own merits, but I don't have a problem with this application. I don't have any problem with it either. And often when um, we get the numbers that are higher you know, in percentage, usually it's when there's like no impact at all because it's surrounded by farmland. So usually if we're going over 30%, which is very unusual. Those are the only circumstances when we do. Anyway, and that's you know that's not the case here. And we have a very small increase in your yard lot coverage. Um, excuse me, Ms. Kern. When um, the question was asked about the uh, screening, um, did were you saying something that well, didn't? I, get... You know, maybe I was confused. I kind of drove by, but I was on the other side of the field, and it didn't look like that screening existed to that extent. But 
since this is an aerial view and I assume it's a recent one, I guess it does. Okay. Sorry, I just, you know, I may have been confused about what property I was looking at, but it didn't seem as significant as on the aerial view. Bruce, is it aerial from this year or last year? I guess probably last year. Uh, about a year, year and a half. It, about a year, year and a half ago. Um, I, I know what Ms. Kearns is saying. If you were on Deerfield Road, right. um, the screening is different because they're more like trees and stuff. I wasn't talking um, about the screening against the farmland. I was talking about the northern screening. Didn't the, neighbor, the neighbor is the question. It's Bruce, a dense, yeah. dense head. Susan's question. Yeah, the neighbor. It's a it dense didn't look head. As, as, as lush as what you're presenting on this. I, I would assume that you, if you agree to maintain a, legislate, a, a vegetative uh, hedge screening as part of your variance, then you're going to have to maintain one. We're, we're okay. happy to do so. Yeah. Can you just condition it? That's all. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's already agreed to. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then my comment, uh, without prejudice on your application, Mr. Anderson, is I, I wanted to compliment your office for the complete uh, way in which the application was presented, uh, was filled out. You know, no chicken scratch. No, all the questions were answered, and all the information was in order. And uh, that makes it easier to look at these applications. So thanks to your office for doing it. You're welcome. Okay. So any other questions, members of the board or Katie or uh, Anthony? No. Okay. Is there anyone from the public who's waiting to be heard on Zoom this evening in connection with the application of Prager? This is for property located at 628 Head of Pond Road in Watermill. If you would like to be heard, this would be the time to let us know by raising your hand. I see no hands. Good. If not, um, Ms. Kern, the application is yours. So I guess we close the, no, we- You're gonna close, we, close, close we, the we do summit. written submissions for 6-3 and a decision on 6-17. Mm -hmm. That's it. I will is second that. that <laughs> yes, that's it. Okay, thank you, sorry. <laughs> okay, Ms. Kern. Aye. Mr. DeSessa. Aye. Mr. Daly. Aye. Mr. Kelly. Aye. Mr. Tuthill. Aye. Ms. Burgess. Aye. Mr. Tsai. Thanks so much, Bruce. Thank you. Have a good night. You as well. Item three, item three on the agenda is East Corp 535 Realty Inc., 535 Montauk Highway in East Corp, Suffolk County Tax Map 900-341-1-52. Applicant requests a determination as to whether or not the proposed 1,468 square foot convenience store is a customary accessory use to the existing gasoline filling station pursuant to town code 330-5 definitions, accessory use buildings or structure. In addition, applicant requests relief from the following provisions of the town code for the proposed convenience store, one, 330-95, schedule of off street parking space, parking space requirements for non-residential uses to allow nine parking spaces where a minimum of 15 parking spaces is required. Two, 330-116, uh, extensions as it relates to 330-167B, 1A. Specific types of variances to allow an, ex, uh, an expansion of a non conforming use to it, to allow a 1,468 square foot convenience store to replace a pre existing non conforming 1,182 square foot building, a 24% expansion. And three, 330 78. Placement of accessory buildings and uses in non residential districts to allow two off street parking spaces to be located in the front yard where no off street parking shall be permitted in the front yard and any other relief necessary. Board has jurisdiction. Good evening. Uh, Members, I, um, 
I'm uh, going to be uh, presenting on behalf of the applicant. Just need to swear you in unless you're an attorney. Yep, I think we're looking for John Scott Prudenti. Okay. John, say it again. John Scott uh, Prudenti. Okay. Just John. John. He's coming. Good evening. John, we just we can't hear you. We need to there we there we go. We and Charles, are you here, you here for the applicant too? Yes, I am. Okay. Jo John, we can see you, but we still can't hear you. <laughs> Gotta turn your volume up. Yeah. Adam, and we also have Charles uh, Southern. Yes. John, there's a microphone there. <laughs> Maybe the microphone's malfunctioning or something's going on. Well. Maybe you can type some signs. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. I don't, I don't know. I don't know whether it's the connection or whether it's the volume. Um, John, well, give me another minute to figure this out. If not, we can, uh, can call it, I guess. You can use his phone to call it. I can, I can Charles, start, yeah, yeah. I can Charles, start with the presentation while we're trying to figure out what's wrong with John's microphone. Okay. Well, Chuck, I just have to swear you in unless you're an attorney. I said fine. Uh, Charles W. Charles W. Southern Jr., a registered architect, 435 Bay Home Road, South Old New York. And do you swear to tell the truth? So you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. Okay. All right. Well, I guess I'll let you and John do the application, and hopefully, John will be will be able to hear him shortly. Good. Thank you. All right. As as you, as you know, this is a uh, pre-existing non-conforming building. It was um, sealed in uh, 19, uh, October 28, 1976, but it was listed as prior to October 14, 1957, it was built. Uh, it's been around for quite some time. The existing building is 1,182 square feet and it's an office uh, auto repair, typical old gas station building. Uh, and there are three CO gas pumps that go along with it. That's the existing uh, structures on the property right now. There are current. There is currently no curbing on Walker. Uh, there is cur curbing on Montauk Highway. There are, is no storm drainage on the property. There is no landscaping on the property. Uh, the gas pumps are 15 feet off of Montauk Highway. Um, and uh, the site is a very difficult site the way it is now. It, uh, it's not complying with anything that is according to the code. And there was no landscaping whatsoever on the site. Uh, what, what my client is proposing, uh, we are proposing to do is uh, rebuild everything there on the site, um, move the pumps back, everything will conform to the front yard setbacks, which there are front yard setback on Montauk Highway, the front yard setback on Walker Avenue, they're both 30 foot. The new building will come, building and pumps will comply with both of those front yard setbacks. Um, there you go. Okay. Um, it now will have the required front yard landscaping. We'll have the total landscaping is required on site. It will have curbs, a uh, curb cut on Walker Avenue um, that's approximately uh, 80 feet back from. Montauk Highway, so there's plenty of distance for the corner. And the proposed uh, curb cut on Montauk Highway is going to be more or less in the middle of the property, about 25 feet from the intersection of Walker and Montauk Highway. Um, we are asking for um, a, uh, first of all, we're asking for a discussion about whether this is a customary accessory use to a gas station. You yes. want to take that up? You want me to go through well, it? Well, it appears to be. I mean, everybody everybody seems to have a, 
that use in place in most gas stations nowadays. So I would I would seem to think it's a customary use. Yes. I don't right. Know. right. But we go through an analysis and our analysis. Or how much gas? Yeah. Yeah. yeah the, the basically sales receipts on the sale of gas versus the convenience store. Because we want to make sure the accessory use is accessory so that you know it should be that the um, get the, the sale of gas is more in terms of gross receipts than the accessory use of the convenience store. So that's how we historically have handled uh, that issue. That is uh, the, the determination as to whether it's a customer accessory use. Um, and as to the rest of it, um, well, well, we'll talk about the issues with the parking spaces um, cool. and uh, the, the circumstances of this particular parcel that, you know, make it, it was, challenging. Uh, I, I submitted, I submitted to uh, Ms. Cal a uh, comparison from a similar station my client has in Santa Mauritius, and um, it's a gas station convenience store similar to this, a very small one, and um, it's got the figures in the gas uh, far outweighs the amount of sales in the convenience store, and I submitted that to, to the board. Okay. All right. All right. Do we, uh, Adam, uh, Chair, do we have uh, a particular formula about more uh, sales or is it just more in terms of dollar amount of well, gas yeah. sales to convenience store sales? So is there any kind of formula involved? Yeah, I mean, I, I look at it to a certain, certain extent that we have some discretion there as to when uh, an accessory use is accessory just in the same way that we deal with accessory buildings as being accessory. Um, so, I mean, if it's close to 100%, I would have a, 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 you know, a, a difficulty with that, just speaking for myself. Um, so it should be, in my view, you know, quite a bit less. Um, than, yes. Yeah, yeah. Than, than, than How much less, then, in your view? Well, I think, I think we, 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 t we take each application as it goes. But, I mean, you know, in my view, 50% to 75% at most, in my, in my view. But you know, I, I also it, think we it, should take a look at other, yeah. other gas station applications and what the percentages were there. Yeah, we, we don't look at a fixed number. The test is that is the primary revenue from business the sales of gas. And if the primary revenue is the sales of business, so to answer I, the best I can, Michael, is if, if we can demonstrate the primary use of the facility is the sale of gas, um, not us that they, that's demonstrated to us and we're satisfied with that being the case, then the um, convenience becomes incidental to the sale of gas and that the, the draw for the destination is the sale of gas uh, for a majority of the customers is kind of how we've done that uh, in my recollection. How could we know in this situation where it hasn't been built yet? I guess the only way would be to take the information that Correct. Charles has given us on a similar gasoline yeah. station. Yeah. Correct. On the proposed for, for that. We've, we've had about a half dozen to maybe a dozen of these come through I in recall. the last maybe, you know, four to eight years you, in the conversion. Yeah, yeah. I recall. I recall um, seeing them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank and you. I, and I can't remember yeah. a single one where it was like, you know, 100%. It was the same. You know, I think on all the ones that we've, we've heard it, and my, you know, I go back a little further than Brian on the board, um, you know, it is significantly less um, in terms of percentage. But um, anyway, we take it at each application as it goes. And yeah. Brian is absolutely correct that we don't have a, a specific percentage that we say you can't go beyond that. We could have to consider each case on its, you know, on its own. Um, so we'll see what the percentage is. I mean, and actually, right. I think we have some information on that. Well, you know, nowadays, just so you guys know, you know, at three dollars a gallon, you sell a thousand gallons of gasoline in a day. That's three thousand dollars worth of business. My father had three thousand gallons worth of storage in a gas station in Hampton Bays. We used to get a delivery at five o'clock on a Saturday afternoon, and it was gone by three o'clock the next day. So I'm just saying, percentage-wise, you're going to find out that the gasoline will be more than the convenience store. Right. Sure. That's what we've always found. Yeah, yeah and we always that's, have. That's by, by, right. the, by the numbers, by the actual numbers. Yeah. 
<laughs> you have those. You have those documents. I know that the gas sales was substantially more than the retail sales in the CISO, but I don't remember the numbers. But you have them there, and if you need more, we can certainly uh, forward them to you. Okay. All right. Do Do we have the the volume issue uh, for for John? Uh, uh, John, can can we hear you at this point? Hear me now? <laughs> yeah, we can hear you. Okay. Yay. <laughs> Thank you, Candice. <laughs> okay, good evening. How are you, everybody? Sorry about the technical glitch. That's right, it happens. <laughs> new modern age, Mr. Berdenti, new modern age. <laughs> I'm slowly adjusting, very slowly. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, please, um, what do you have? Let's see, what else should we go over? Um, we, go ahead, Chuck. We are we are meeting all of the uh, requirements of the code as far as uh, setbacks, landscaping. Uh, we're providing a buffer landscaping against the residents to the south. Um, the building height is within code of, uh, requirements. Um, the building, the proposed building, is fourteen hundred and sixty-eight square feet. I, I come out with a 20% increase, but you've got 24%, um, it's fine. The canopy is 1,392 square feet and the canopy is attached to the building. It's not freestanding. Um, the reason that my client wants to uh, convert this building, the use of this building is because of the fact that just to the uh, west of here, there's a pretty large auto repair facility and about a block or two to the east of here, there's a former gas station that no longer pumps gas, but does automobile repairs. And there is no other um, gas station within the area that I have seen. Um, the problem, the one, one deficiency of the site is that it's for the convenience store, there's a requirement for one space for 100 square feet. Um, that requires 15 spaces. We only have nine, but in addition to the nine spaces, we also have five fueling spaces. And there's also room on, on the street, on the curb. And I believe uh, when I was there, there's no restriction to parking on Montauk Highway. Uh, could you say what those five other spaces are? Uh, those spaces are, are nine by 20. The five of them? Correct. Those are the ones by the pumps and the one outside oh, the, of the pump. Well, the yeah, ones the by fuel, the pump. The fueling station. The one, ones by the pump are different. Um, the, ones, the ones by the pump are, they really don't have, they're not really spaced. The, the width of the canopy is, is 24 foot and um, you, it's roughly 12 foot wide for each one of them from the center line of the gas island. Um, and the length of the canopy is 42 feet, which allows uh, approximately 21 feet for each car underneath the canopy, although they don't all have to be under the canopy. There is uh, room to the north side of the canopy for two more cars and um, there's room on the on the west side for two more cars also. Um, what is? Oh, go ahead, Adam. I'm sorry. I was going to ask Mr. Trezor a question, but go ahead. You go first. No, no go ahead. Ask, ask Anthony a question. So, uh, Anthony, is it? I was it, going there too. Is the parking that they're here for driven by the size of the building, or could you just, from a planning perspective, um, the implication of the ask, or what's driving the ask? Is it, is it so? The 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 parking requirement uh, is is based on, and I don't have the plans in front of me. Uh, you know, but. But it's based on uh, the size of the convenience store. Um, and my guess is that it's, uh, I'm not sure how it was shown to be calculated, but I believe it's calculated at one per 100 square feet. Um, gotcha. And then 1,400 so, square foot stores generating 14 spaces. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Right. Um, and, um, and, you know, I'll, I'll let everybody do their thing. We, we do have, you know, planning comments, the planning board. So, uh, has yeah. looked at a few um, site plan iterations um, since 2018 on this and has done a pre-submission conference report uh, and, and, you know, has a number of issues uh, with the site. So 
uh, parking also being one of them. So uh, we do think there are planning implications. Yeah, and the applicant's gonna need to go through site plan. So um, yeah. yeah, yeah. But I mean, the planning board uh, uh, concerns about the parking spaces certainly you know, mean something to me um, if, 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 if they, they think that there are not enough spaces. But you know, I also have to have, you know, keep in mind that the applicant has only so much space to deal with on this parcel. Um, so I'm not sure, uh, you know, other than reconfiguring it, what can be done to increase parking spaces if that's what the planning board wants. Maybe they have some ideas. Well, then, yeah. One of the issues here is that there is an existing 1,182 square foot building. To knock down 1,182 square foot building and build something that's at least slightly larger is going to be a, a, a futile waste of his money. My client is going to be spending an awful lot of money to put in curbs, drainage, landscaping, uh, a new building, a new canopy and everything, um, rather than it could be left the way it is. It's, it's, a, it's a CO building. Um, I'm sure that you probably would um, listen to a request to turn the existing building into a convenience store but that doesn't remedy any of the situations of the pumps being so close to Montauk Highway and the access and the ingress and egress to the site. Uh, are you help that at all? Are you re pulling out the old tanks and putting new tanks in the ground? Is that part of this proposal? No, the tanks, the tanks are going to remain. Are they and they're they're compliant? They're fiberglass or whatever they are. They are. They are. They were replaced not too long ago. They are compliant with Suffolk County Code. Okay. So, Anthony, the, is the planning board opposed uh, to, to the amount of parking spaces that are being proposed here? Well, well a couple things, Adam. Um, the first thing I just want to say right off the bat that um, this is an unlisted action under CICRA. Uh, the planning board is going to recommend uh, a coordinated review, and they're going to want to be lead agency. Uh, back in 2018, we actually got an application for this site, and I don't remember the specs specifically, but the, the, it was a bigger, larger size building. Uh, but the planning board issued a positive declaration under secret for that at that time. Um, there was a lot of public controversy. There's a lot of concerns. Uh, we understand uh, that the site needs to be fixed up. We understand uh, that <clears throat> there was a pre-existing use there. There's no question about that. Uh, but, you know, from the planning board's perspective, uh, the minimum lot area for a service station, a gas station, is 40,000 square feet. And so they have a 16,000 square foot lot, 16,000 and change with a pre-existing gas station. Uh, the planning board's taking a very close look at the size of the convenience store. The, you know, it, for, from the planning board's perspective, it's not so much a question of how much they could squeeze on the site. It's whether or not the size of the building uh, is too big given the size of the, 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 the property. Um, you know, and that's what we're gonna be looking at when we do the site plan. Um, you know, because it, the, 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 the parking requirement for a convenience store uh, is higher because it, it generates more parking. Um, so, you know, that's that's going to be a big issue for the planning board. So what I think, in addition to the secret, we, the applicant's going to have to go back to the planning board with these plans um, on, on a referral so we could get comments um, to this board as well. Yeah, I have a question for you. Um, I don't know if you remember, but I think at the last meeting or the one before that, we had a laundromat application and the parking requirements for it in Southampton anyway was like one spot per machine. And you had indicated that Southampton's requirements in that respect were much stricter than other surrounding municipalities. Not that they're right and we're wrong. I'm just uh, curious, is the one lot for 100 uh, square foot of convenience store is that pretty standard, or is this more, uh, or is this uh, more severe or stricter than other municipalities? Or you, if you don't know the answer, you don't know the answer. But curious. Are you asking me, or? Yeah, I'm asking you. If you, if okay. you know, other are, are municipalities, is it is it standard to have one spot per 100 square feet, or is that um, more strict? Than neighboring you know, uh, specifically from others, um, I don't know. But generally speaking, I mean, others locally. Uh, but generally speaking, um, uh, a convenience store use um uh, has a higher parking demand um uh, because it's a, a, a destination use for the high turnover uh of vehicles entering and exiting the site so that's typically why the parking requirement uh is is a higher standard than uh other retail requirements uh, it, was, it, it, it was a very conscious decision to do that given the use gotcha well thank you 
Yeah, and I think a couple of other considerations, and we'll hear more from the applicant and, and also from neighbors. Um, yeah, okay. did get a few letters from people who were opposed or, or emails, although didn't really indicate where they lived. And I don't know whether they're adjacent property owners. I don't think they are, but I could be wrong. Uh, but anyway, the two other things I just wanted to mention is the percentage expansion by 24% you know, on a you know, relatively modest you know, size lot to begin with. Um, you know, I think that's something we, we you know, can talk about some more. Uh, but also, um, are there residences next to this uh, uh, gas station uh, that are going to be impacted by all, all of this? Um, when you have a, a, uh, a gas station or other commercial use uh, adjacent to residential uses that, you know, it creates some real challenges. So um, in terms of impacts on the neighbors. But anyway, um, so I wanted to ask uh, uh, um, the applicant about that. But um, before that, any other questions that um, anybody else has? So we have to send this out for Secret, correct? We do. So, yeah. I mean, we're going to... I'm just thinking in terms of this evening, um, if there's any other things the applicant wants to present, otherwise we should send those referrals out to start coordinating because this is going to remain open just yeah. in terms of efficiency of running the, the this process. We have a few people that want to speak. Sure. Yep. All right. So we can uh, go to speakers. Why don't we do that? We'll go to speakers and then, uh, then we'll come back. Um, so who would... Um, so would uh, any, is there anyone from the public who would like to be heard this evening in connection with the application of East Quag 535 Realty Inc. This is for property located at 535 Montauk Highway in East Quag. If you are waiting to be heard, this would be the time to let us know by raising your hand. And I'm not sure who wants to go first. Um, Robin is first. Robin's first. Okay. Robin, we just need to be able to see you and hear you. Trying to unmute myself. We hear you. Okay. You did it. You did okay. it. I think it's really funny that. Um, hold, 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 hold on, Robin. We can't hear you, but we can't see you. And I have to swear you in. Okay. All right. Do you like on my video? Is that what I do? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. okay. Oh, so here I am. Here's my haircut. Okay. That's okay. Good. So, so if you just state your name and address for the record, please. Robin Rains. 525 Montauk Highway, East Quag, New York. Okay, and do you swear to right tell next door? And do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but all day long, buddy? That's right. Okay. All right. Okay, so you can tell us your comments, please. Um, nobody ever next door has ever come to us to discuss anything about what they want to do, right? Um, also, I. I, I I was, on the, I was on a call last year, same thing. These guys just come and they just want to do something. And I don't want a convenience store next door to me. I don't want cigarettes being sold next door to me. I don't want that. My father died when he was 39 of lung cancer. I don't want that. Um, they're great neighbors in many ways. I'm going to say that, okay? But here's the thing I'm going to say. They moved the, the, the they moved the air and added a vacuum to the back of the property, which I'm not sure is illegal. I'm not sure it's legal. And I asked about this last year. And nobody followed up on it, even my attorney. You know. So, um, and I said, you know, I, I don't mind having somebody vacuum next door to my deck. But, um, you know, nobody's, nobody's reached out to us anymore, okay? Uh, I, don't, I don't understand how I can be next door and not have anybody have reached out to me. And you guys can be talking about convenience store this and, you know, parking this. But nobody has ever picked up the phone and talked to me and walked in my yard with me, okay? Are you, are you asking that from the applicant? What do you think, buddy? What do you think, Brian, if you live next door to this? Uh, well, I'm, I'm trying to help you here, but if you're- I don't know I'm if asking, you are, Brian. Like, yes, of course I'm asking you. Robin, Robin, you know don't you know need what? to be rude. Don't mess up my home. You just, you can don't say what you need to say. You can say what you need to say, but don't be 
rude. Well, Brian should ask us. I'll refer to him. Well, I'm, I won't ask any more questions of you. Go ahead. You have, you're, you're running out of time. You're welcome you have to ask minutes. me questions, Go Brian. Ahead. Just don't ask me stupid questions, okay? Well, you really need to be respectful, Robin. It's really it's very disrespectful. I completely yeah. agree. And so does my neighbor. Okay. Well, just tell us your complaints. Okay. My complaint is that they moved the air and added uh, the, and added vacuum right to the back of the property without, I'm sure, I'm not even sure it's legal because it's right next to my neighbor and it's right next to me. I asked about it last year. Nobody said a word about it to me. They have never reached out to me. I've, I've told their attorney that I'm, I am a capitalist and I'm not beyond dealing with whatever they want to do. Okay. But you guys are all standing there and sitting there and talking about convenience stores. You know what we're doing, Robin? We're having a public hearing. That's what I we're know. doing. We're yeah, not, that's we're not, we're not doing something to antagonize someone. And guess what? I, 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 I really door. take exception. I live next I really door. take exception to the characterization that we're insensitive to your concerns. I even brought oh, up the Excuse, Excuse me. Excuse me. I specifically brought up what? <laughs> oh, great. You know, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm I specifically gonna... brought up the, the, the concerns of, of what the impact on the residential the, the residential neighbors. I specifically said that before a word was uttered. So anyway, if you'd like to say a few words, I'll swear you in as well. Okay, hi. My name is Jane Deets. Okay, and, do you, and your address? 525 Montauk Highway, East Park. And do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Okay, if you can tell us your comments. Uh, I... I... So there were some of them were uh, communicated. I do think they've made, they've definitely cleaned up everything. It looks a lot nicer. We're obviously concerned that it's going to be significantly busier. It is a residential neighborhood. There's lots of kids riding their bikes around and cutting that corner and stuff like that. I am concerned that there's a lot of more cars going in and out. It could be dangerous for the, the, that neighborhood that I'm, I don't think any, none of the neighbors, so we actually talked to every single neighbor that's adjacent and across. No one was communicated to, spoken to, and they've been doing, you know, some changes like the vacuum cleaner, et cetera, seemingly without any kind of permitting and things like that. So obviously there's concerns that it's going to be like a really big gas station. There's going to be a lot of traffic and it's going to change the flavor of the neighborhood. That is the biggest concern. Can I ask a question? Did you ever receive a formal notice in the mail? No, ma'am, we did not. Can you please okay. move to the I'm just trying to clarify what notices you got. So you got no public, you got no notice in the mail. Well, hold, hold, hold on, hold on. Was, wasn't there a notice post Let's find out who got outside notice. the gas Let's station? There was on, a notice on. post outside the gas station, and which is how, God. how we knew about this. And that's how we knew about it. Mm -hmm. but we, we did not receive any notices at, at, at our address. I, I'd like to ask Robin, uh, you might ask her, when she said that she notified people, about her concerns, but nobody ever got back to her. Who were these people that she notified? Um, the people in the hearing last oh. year, their attorney. Their attorney, you mean? The, their, I, I don't know which one of you dudes the is their attorney. Can you just try to be more respectful? I'm being respectful. Re re really, really, Robin. I mean, this is just people how you speak. Right, we're, we're, we're up I, on our time, Mr. Dude. I think we've had I, enough. I think we've had enough. If, if you, if Robin, oh, I, I like to put something in writing, that's fine. But I'm not going to have members of my board disrespected. I, I apologize on behalf of Robin. She's very upset and angry, and it is very stressful for her. So she, I apologize on behalf of her. It, we, 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 we are trying to be. So she believes that the attorney did not fair, accurately communicate I've got to her. I the video from last year, and she feels like that we were misled. I have the video. Okay. Well, the only other thing I just want to mention is that if anyone thinks that something's going on on the property that doesn't comply with the code, call code enforcement. Call code enforcement. We're not code enforcement, but call code enforcement in the town. Okay, so I guess what we were just trying to do was trying to be a good neighbor. And we were trying, we said like, hey, I don't know if that's code. Could you, you know, could we talk about this? You know, what do you guys, what the big plans? And then no one came and ever spoke to us. And, they, and they, we were told, we were told, their attorney told our attorney or you, Robin, that they were going to move it. So, like they were sorry they had moved it and they were going to move the vacuum, but that never happened. Yeah. So that's why she feels misled and upset about it. I am misled and upset. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. Um, 
want to find out if there's anyone else on the public who's willing to be heard in connection with the application. Cindy is next. Okay. All right, Cindy, to set this for you in, if you can state your name and address, please. Cindy McNamara, 75 Lewis Road, East Quag, New York. And do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Can you tell us your comments? I am the chair of the East Quag CAC. Um, I am here on behalf of our CAC. They asked me to speak on their behalf this evening. Um, I just want to give you a background. I understand why Robin is upset. This was in 2018, this came up. And honestly, on my time as a CAC, as the chair, I've never had an application that has had so much pushback and so many issues with it as this one. Um, in 2018, our CAC spent over an hour with, an, with the architect um, with concerns about the project that we had. He went to the planning board and said that he spoke to our organization and we thought the plan was great as is, had no complaints. So at that point in time, I told the architect that I would not take the time of my CAC to entertain him if what we had said and what people were bringing to him was not even going to be thought about in the process. Um, our issues are that this is not just a, and, and again, I, I understand Robin's frustration with this. This is not just when you start hearing about percentages and what's allowed and what's not allowed. This is East Quag. This is not on Montauk Highway in West Hampton, where the Montauk Highway is offset from the village. This is our downtown. There are historical homes all around this. The biggest thing is that the people of East Quag want to see this brought closer to code, not further away from code. Um, the applicant has not tried to do anything with the existing building as far as a convenience store is concerned. Um, the, the square footage not being enough, uh, strong oil or, or the Shell Station in Hampton Bays is 800 square feet, and I'm sure they do plenty of business in their convenience store. Um, the applicant stating that there is no landscaping on the property is because the applicant removed every single last piece of vegetation on that property. You can go to aerial maps, you can see it for yourselves. Everything was removed line to line. Um, Walker Avenue is a very narrow street. It doesn't even have, it doesn't even have a double yellow line painted on it. That's how narrow it is. It is the Western access to our, um, to Bay Avenue, to our town dock. So there is already a lot of traffic that comes out of there. RCAC um, asked for and received parking restrictions on um, West End Avenue to the west. We asked for a 25 foot no parking restriction on Montauk Highway. The county is now extending that to 90 feet. We asked for a 25 foot parking restriction next to Walnut Avenue to the east. The county has now recommended that that be extended to 90 feet. We are losing parking on Montauk Highway. So this, if this becomes a convenience store, every single parking space counts because they cannot park on Walker. They cannot park on Montauk Highway. Um, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm giving you a lot of information here and I hope you're kind of absorbing it. I will put it in writing and I will send it to you. I know that the planning board had this application. They went through, I contacted the town planner and asked what was going on with it. It, re it was removed from the East Quag Hamlet site as a proposed planning project. Um, and they told me that it had been taken off. So the only way that we knew about this was because the public hearing notice was put up for the ZBA. So the CAC saw this as the applicant sidestepping the planning board to go to the ZBA, which makes me happy that the planning board is represented. Um, because this is absolutely has to go through the planning board. There's, it's, our park is right across the street. Our, it's our downtown area. There are historical homes. There are so many things that need to be taken into consideration besides just percentages. Um, and it's just not the location for it. There's three delis within walking distance of this. Like I said, our school is right there. The main crosswalk for our school is on Lewis and on, and on, um, Cent uh, central. So it's, it's a very dense area already. And the curb cuts, the way they're putting them in, all of the deliveries will have to take place from either Montauk Highway 
or Walker. They will not be able to get, and if, you, if you've seen, and I've seen it, the, the delivery truck that comes that fills their tanks with gas, there is no way for that truck to get into their location and deliver gas. It must be delivered from Walker or Montauk Highway. And the residents on Walker are very upset about this, you know, and, and it's, it's just, there's a lot to be taken into consideration beyond percentages. So I just ask that you please involve the planning board and, and RCAC will be more than happy to give you our feedback on what we have concerns about. And it is a very sensitive area via traffic and historical. So that's all. And I, I really appreciate your comments, uh, Cindy. And, you know, I knew well, when reviewing this application, that it was going to have a major impact on, on the, the, the residential neighbors. So I'm very sensitive to that. I feel badly that the that the neighbor is so upset that you know, uh, uh, that she you know was you know behaved the way she did. Uh, but I understand that she's upset. And, yeah. yeah, yeah. And she did. I mean, she did. Honestly, there was no vacuum. That vacuum is like right next to her patio. Like she can't drink her coffee and not listen to that vacuum running. So the fact that it was even placed there was so insensitive. And our other big issue is right now, you can drive around the building that's there. You can exit on either side and this will close it off. So the only way to exit and enter would be through Walker if there's people at the pumps. Okay. All right. Um, thank you. Thank you. Um, Ed, question. Edward, next. Yes. Edward. Edward. Just have to swear you in and just need you to unmute yourself. Okay, if you can state your name and address, please. Okay, Ed Salzburg, 16 Jackson Avenue, East Quag, New York. And do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing about the truth? I do. Okay, and Ed, uh, where are you in relation to uh, this, the uh, property? So I live about a half a mile from the property. Um, you go down Walker Avenue um, and uh, do the uh, Foster Crossing and then uh, Jackson okay. Avenue. So um, it's, it's close by. Whenever I drive in or out of the area, I generally go down Walker and I walk every single day uh, by uh, around down Walker past the uh, current gas station. Um, I really want to come and make three points today. Uh, one is about you know the nature of the hamlet uh, and the community. Um, the second is about the traffic flow, and the third is, is about is this needed. So first about the hamlet. This is a really quaint Hamlin. I appreciated the point that, that was made by the previous speaker, that this is our downtown. This is not the high, it's, it's Montauk Highway, but this is our the central part of our community. Um, adding another gas station and convenience store seems incompatible with the East Quag that I think the community would like to see in the future. And so I just don't think we need another gas station convenience store and it really would be, I think, counter to the quaintness that we're trying to establish in East Quad. Uh, second, the traffic. You know, it, it wasn't mentioned, but the reality is that the Lewis Road ends about 50 feet from where Walker Avenue begins. When you drive out of Walker Avenue, it's really a challenge, particularly in the summer months, to get onto Montauk Highway if you're going left because the cars are coming down Lewis, Lewis Avenue. Um, and walking or biking, you, you clearly notice that cars are entering, already entering the gas station via Walker. So they make a, a you sort of make a right, but because the entrance of the gas station is right there, they basically make a right and then go right into the gas station. It, it, the traffic pattern would really be disrupted and disruptive to the community. It was mentioned that there were a lot of kids in the community. This, this, this segment of East Quag has a lot of young kids who ride bikes all the time. They are constantly riding up and down Walker Avenue. And when you come out, because you would not be able to exit the, the gas station convenience store on Montauk Highway, you would be forced to come out down Walker. You'd be adding an incredible amount of additional traffic to Walker Avenue which I think would be totally disruptive and dangerous for the young people there. Third, the, the question of, do we need this? It was mentioned that several delis are within walking distance of, where, of Walker and Montauk Highway. We also have three car repair shops 
car shop. And despite what was mentioned earlier about no other gas station, there is another gas station in East Quag, four tenths of a mile away from the proposed expand, expanded gas station. And there's a mobile station two and a half miles away in, in East Ham, in uh, Hampton Bays. There's no need for another gas station in this community. Then there's no need for another convenience store. So I, I urge the zoning board to, to reject this application. It's inconsistent with what, where we want the community to go in terms of its, what this hamlet is, and it's not needed. And I think it would add significantly add to the traffic in the community. Thank you. Okay, thank you for your comments. Is there anyone else waiting to be uh, heard? Uh, Jessica, Jessica. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna unmute and start my video. I'm okay. sorry, I'm outside and at a soccer, oh wait, where'd it go, hang on. I'm sorry, I'm in an outdoor field. So if you hear kids, it's okay. that's, that's okay. what it is. Hang on one sec. Yep. Um, Charles, it's telling me, I just have to go fix my settings quick. Give me a sec, please. Okay. Um, oh, where is this? Okay. I'm telling you to put your video on that. Can you see that? Yeah, it's, I. We can hear you, we just can't see you. And now I'm not sure we can hear you. <laughs> Technology. Yeah. Well, can we do it with just the hearing without the, uh, the visual? If we have to, we can. Yeah. But we don't have either at this point. I know, but let's hear what she has to say if we, we can. We don't have the, the audio. We either. lost her. No. Well, hopefully she'll come back. In the meantime, um, uh, Chuck or John, do you want to maybe just uh, give us uh, a few comments in response to what you've heard so far? If I may, uh, Mr. Chairman, um, first off, with respect to the operation or the operator of this particular uh, of this particular business, um, his Santa Mauritius location is in an historic district. My office is right next door in an historic district. My newest part of my home is built in 1903. I appreciate the uh, uh, attractiveness of a small hamlet. I live in one myself. I'm not far from the area. Um, he's an extremely conscientious uh, operator. Uh, this gas station next door, we're working very, very closely with the Historical Society uh, to reconform a building that we really don't have to, um, but with a slate roof and, and other things. With respect to this particular site, um, this particular site now is going to be landscaped and, and, and reconformed, I believe, with, uh, with the vision towards what would be fitting um, uh, with this uh, business with respect to the uh, park and uh, the nature of the building that Chuck has in fact designed. Um, and I know that people have been mentioning the delis, the delis, the delis. A convenience store is a totally different entity. Um, a convenience store is something that is sometimes nice to have after the time of six, seven o'clock at night to be able to run in and get ice cream and get milk and get soda. The, um, and most delis, at least all the delis in this town, um, are, they're shut up by five, six o'clock. And that's my comment on that. But I believe or, uh, we have a, a person that would like to speak now at the soccer field. Yes. <laughs> okay. So just to okay. swear you in and you can state your name and address, please. Hi, Jessica in Sulaco, 24 Peacock Path, East Quag, New York. And do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Can you tell us the comments? Um, I, I really just think it's, it's uh, this piece of property is just really too small. Um, I think Anthony Treza said earlier that it was uh, normally you'd expect something to be like an acre or so, and this is like 16,000 square feet. Um, it's very tiny. It's in a, it's in a tough, um, location. Uh, the gentleman that spoke earlier about Walker, um, road is, a, is perfectly correct in terms of the actual use of that area. There's kids, there's walkers there, you know, it's very, very, um, well used area by the community. And, uh, my concern is really just about making it a much more intense, um, situation, for uh for everyone involved with you know more cars more traffic um 
the tightness of the space in terms of safe, um, you know, entry and exit. And that's also for deliveries, safe entry and exit. Um, the line of sight isn't great from getting out of Walker, et cetera. So, so that's my concern. And I would just hope that um, you guys would work with the planning team um, to see what this person can do that, that, that can work for them. Because right now they, the gas station has been there a long time, works fine. Uh, the previous owner used to um, sell uh, propane out of there. That was, a, I think, a good business for them. And, um, you know, they were able to, you know, have a, have a business that didn't disrupt the community. My other um, concern uh, from the application is, I, and I'm not, um, I'm not obviously expert in this, but there, there was some request to put a very tall canopy, uh, which would be very, very um, I think disruptive visually for the community, uh, the neighbors uh, to the east and to the south and to the west. And then also, um, you know, just the park and everything right there nearby to have a huge canopy all of a sudden put up is, is a visual concern of mine. So thanks for listening. I appreciate all your hard work. Um, and we appreciate you uh, giving us the chance to, to um, come and tell you our concerns. Uh, Jessica, where do you live uh, as compared with where the property is located? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm far. I'm probably a mile or two away, but I'm on Main Street every day. So I, you know, I, I use that area myself. Um, I go like, like I think uh, Cindy McNamara said, that's our Main Street. So I'm there to go to Sonny's Pork Store. I'm there to go to the, you know, Goldberg's Bagels or Roses and Rice. I mean, that's, that's our commerce area and it extends, um, down towards this uh, gas station. And then there's some other shops and things, you know, all the way down to like West End, you know, West, West Side. Okay, okay, all right. I appreciate you letting us know. So thank you very much. All right, thanks for your comment. Thank you, thank you. All right, so I just wanna mention the reason that I'm asking about who is adjacent is because the neighbor who is very upset who was adjacent, you know, she's one of the people that's really directly impacted by this. So that, that is her and maybe I don't know, however many, a few other uh, adjacent properties. The folks who live a half a mile away or a mile away, you know, they, they, they can be concerned and we can listen to their comments, but it's really the, the adjacent property owners, especially in a situation where we have a commercial use next to a residential, uh, residential uses um, that, you know, we need to be most mindful of in, in, in my uh, opinion and, and in the law. So um, anyway, uh, do we have any other um, um, people waiting to be heard? Oh, uh, yes, Steve. One okay. Second. And I see people want to speak again. I don't know. If you're... No, we're not doing one that. Time. No, we're people speaking once and that's it. The, the hearing is going to be continued over, so they'll have an opportunity to come back. Absolutely. Plus, you can submit written comments. You can submit written comments at any time. Okay, Steve, put your video on. Can I address some of these comments? Thank oh, you. Yes, sir. Uh, um, Chuck, let, let me just wait. Let's wait for the speaker first. Okay, Steve, we see you, and I think we can hear you. Can you hear me? So I just me? have to swear you in. If you can, uh, but uh, we can hear you. I just Very have to good. swear you in. If you can state your name and address. Uh, my name is Stephen Kane. My address is thirty-eight Walker Avenue, East Quad. And do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. You can tell us your comments. Uh. Just uh, very quickly, I am, I live at 38 Walker, which is a little further down from the intersection of Walker and Montauk Avenue. Uh, I am basically for most of the folks on Vaughn Walker Avenue and go up and down that street every day. Uh, Yes, live, going in uh, and out. The buildings and architecture and art. Yeah. Can you hear me? At the moment. <laughs> okay. Uh, all the comments that you've heard about the traffic, uh, et cetera, are very pertinent, but you guys are zoning and you are have a book of uh, zoning codes and rules and things like that. So the zoning for this area is HO, which means Hamlet Office Residential. And the applicant is requesting relief from a number of zoning dimensional guidelines as if the proposed use gas station and convenience store were in any way in compliance with an HO zoning. 
if this were not an existing gas station, the town of Southampton, as someone else pointed out, would require per chapter 330, blah, 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 a lot area of not less than 40,000 square feet. The lot is 16,360 feet, nor shall a filling station have a frontage of less than 200 feet along a collector street. And this appears at best to be 112 feet. So there are a number of other elements of the zoning article that the proposed building and lot layout do not come close to achieving. Some of that uh, a little disingenuous in the reporting of the numbers is that the existing facility is about 1100 square feet. They're proposing 1400 feet, but when you factor in the canopy, it's over 3,100 feet uh, of structure that's gonna be there. And the canopy is over 22 feet in height and it extends within 25 feet of Walker Avenue, a residential street. HO zoning per your look for our town of Southampton local law number 22 amended on February 10th of 2014 specifically calls out the intent of this zoning. Quote, these areas should maintain their current residential scale. HO will allow low traffic generating retail and service uses, i.e. antique stores, galleries, restaurants, all the things that are part of what downtown East Quag is. High traffic impact uses would not be allowed, i.e. video stores, gas stations, addition, HO zoning would entail performance standards requiring that buildings appear residential, no front parking, rear or side parking, et cetera. So though the current station is existing and in non-compliance, to exacerbate the non-compliance hardly seems in keeping with the reasons that HO zoning was enacted to begin with. So the entire notion of taking this site that is completely in non-compliance with our zoning as it stands now and then to make the situation worse by factoring in all these other elements, architecturally, spatially, uh, traffic-wise, impact on the entrance to our charming little village, uh, it's, it's a hard sell. Okay. And Steve, I, wanna, I can tell I you wanna, the planning board, Steve, Steve, I'm sorry. Excuse me, wanna bring, just, bring, just wanna correct something here. Okay, sure. which is that you are correct that a gas station use would not, I don't believe it would be permissible in based on the current zoning. However, right. this applicant has a pre-existing gas station CO prior to 57, prior to the enactment of zoning. So it's, it's, so it's a pre-existing use that is allowed to continue because they have a CO st stating that it was built pre-57. I just wanted to, to bring that to your attention. I understand all the you know, position, you know the, the things you're saying about you know, expanding it and, and 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 the impacts, and I appreciate that. But this is a pre-existing. It is you know with a CO what, what currently exists. They, they are not in non-compliance. They have a pre-existing use that predates the zoning code. Right, but to increase something that's already in non-compliance, you're just you're making it worse. And and you really have to, if you look at the blueprint. Uh, and the, the site plan and look at the elevations that they've submitted, the building structure is going to be impacting. It's, it's more than twice the size in volume spatially. It's got a second floor now that's extending over the pumps where they're going to put storage or, or something. The planning board uh, received over 100 communications, I believe, from folks in the town, including uh, Cindy's group, uh, Al Algeri's group, and independent people uh, from that area, which is, this is the East Quag Historical District. So all of us have, most of us have much older homes. We're very concerned about making that area feel more commercial. Uh, we realize the gas station is there and it's been there. And frankly, we all get our gas there. So, uh, but to bring what we perceive as kind of a 7-Eleven type situation right into that area uh, was, is a serious mistake. Um, and will not only on the zoning side, but on the planning side, I think there, was, uh, there are significant issues that certainly would give justification for denying this applicant. Uh, 
their their uh, proposal. Uh, I mean, one thing that has, and I think maybe perhaps, I think Robin, uh, what she was talking about was there was a planning board meeting last year, and that's when she was told a number of items, and obviously there was no follow-up after that with well, her. We, we don't know who was supposed to get follow-up. Uh, I believe it was the attorney representing the applicant. Uh, and, and do so, you know that, do you know uh, that I'm not was? quite sure. Okay, but no, I also, don't. but there, also, there is. I'm sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. No, I, I just was going to say, you know, this this application was before this zoning board too, and we did, you know, we took testimony. I believe the planning board took testimony, and then the application before us was withdrawn. You know, so that also may be why things that people were hoping would be followed through never gotten followed through because right. it never came back. Right, right. But now it's here, and I sure. think. Uh, you've heard our concerns and, and, you know, if I needed to get a hundred people to write letters tomorrow or appear on this zoom call, I could do it. Um, but we all have lots of things to do with our time. So uh, with that, I'll uh, wish you all a good evening and uh, do the right thing for East Quad. Thank you for your comments, Steve. Appreciate it. Is there anyone else who's waiting to be heard on zoom? The connection with this application being East Quad. 535 Realty Inc., 535 Montauk Highway in East Quad. No more hands. No more hands. Okay. So, John or Chuck, at this point, maybe you can give us uh, your, your feedback, but I want to tell you, I'm real concerned. I'm real concerned. Uh, I understand. If you, could, uh, if you could put up the elevations of the building, the proposed building, what happened was uh, we realized last year when we proposed this building that uh, it wasn't something that the town had wanted uh, the way it was. The town had given us a building, uh, which is a two-story building, which they thought we should have on this site, a two-story building with 2,200 square feet with, um, I believe there was nine parking places also. I have a copy of what the planning board gave us is what they wanted to see on this site. Um, we went back to the drawing board after, after that, and we came up with this building. If you put up the building, the, the elevation of the building, you'll see it looks like a residence. Yeah, we don't, we don't, um, we don't have the elevations to share. Um, I sent them to the board. Um, I, I, under, I understand. Can't, we have hard copies of them, but we don't have them to share. Okay, but you have hard copies, so you all you yes. can you can see what it is. All right. So what we did was we tried to make this look like a residential building, and instead of the twenty-two hundred square foot two-story building that the town had recommended, we stayed with a one-story building of 1,400 and change square feet. All right, now I'd like to address a couple of the comments. Um, Robin Rains, next door neighbor, they are also in a Hamlet office zone. Uh, that's not a residential zone, but theirs is a old, large <laughs> residential house, which happens to be larger than this gas station in the proposed building. I also have a copy of the green card, all right, that was sent them, they were notified of the hearing last year when we did this hearing their attorney contacted me and we spoke about three or four times about different issues and their only issue was that they wanted to make sure there was buffer zoning between the proposed building and their property and as you see there is now a substantial uh, 15 i think it's 15 foot buffer zone between the new building and the proposed building and their property line that's fully landscaped um, there is a residence uh, to the south of here, which is a residential zoning. There is a 15 foot landscape buffer against their property too. There'll be nothing in that. No vacuums, no um, uh, uh, anything else that has to be there. This will be strictly landscape buffer zone. Um, vacuums with Cindy oh, and Matt. Well, well Chuck, okay. I have to tell you, I want I would like to see, it's your, your call, but I would like to see direct communication with her about her concerns, okay? She's very upset, so upset that she could really, how do, you know, how not, do I, not really tell us the extent of it because she was so upset. How, and, how do I, I deal with somebody who says they don't want somebody to sell cigarettes because somebody had died of cancer? That's that's not something you could address. I, I, I understand, but but Chuck, I, I think she's she is one of the neighbors who is directly impacted by this literally next door. And if you can do anything to address 
any some of her concerns. I don't know that you'll reach reach a meeting of the minds, but some of her concerns in any way, I think that would be worth the effort, not just her, but but the other adjacent property owners. Yeah. As as I said, she received a copy of the site plan that shows the buffer zone next to her house. Um, she's aware of that it's going to be a landscape. She was last year when this came up because we were doing that also. We've increased it this year. Um, I think I'll leave that up to uh, Mr. Bedenti. Well, I, and I can't and I can't direct anybody to communicate. Okay, but clearly I, she she you know she wants to be heard and she wants to, to have communication. So I would you know if you don't have to do it, and if you don't do it, then you know that she's going to be just as upset next time. I assure you. I, um, I understand. I understand that. I, I think it's in your interest to, to try to communicate with her. And, I, I, I think you definitely back. have to talk to her about this vacuum. That the vacuums can come out of there, and I'll, I'll speak with the owner about taking them out of there. Um, you, need, you need to do that as soon as possible. I will do that tomorrow. I will do I, that. Tomorrow. I appreciate that very much. Yeah. Right. yeah. Mr. Chairman, if I may. The thing is, this, this building it totally meets I'm all sorry. the setbacks. Is that John? I'm big, yeah, leave it to John. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, that's that's yes. That's okay. Um, there is there is a lot of misconception about this building by the local people. They don't realize that it's going to be a residential type looking building. That's why it has pitched roofs. It is not a two story building. It is a single story building. There is nothing other than mechanical space above um, for the air handlers, for the compressors, for the refrigeration uh, cases. Um, the other concept that they say that this is going to bring a lot more traffic, this convenience store is not, nobody's going to come into this area just to go to the convenience store. It's going to be for people who are coming for gas, who live in the neighborhood, that they can stop and they can pick up a bottle of soda. The kids from across the, um, in the park can get over, come over and get an ice cream or soda or something. This is actually um, a very good use. Their complaints, their biggest problem is the fact of the intersection of Walker and um, Lewis. And uh, understandably, I've been there quite a few times and it is a difficult corner there because you have um, Lewis and, and Walker are offset maybe a hundred feet. And then you have a curve coming around Montauk Highway from the West and it makes it difficult to see somebody until very late in the thing. But this has nothing to do with this this building with this this use on the site. Well, what it has is, to do with secret. It, it, it's it, going to be part of part of secret. Um, well, it is part of secret, but you know, it's not, nothing. The gas station is there, and it's still going to be there, and the intersection is still going to be there. I, but 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 you're proposing to increase the, the basically what's going on on this lot, and it's 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 going to have to be addressed in secret, and it's it will be. <laughs> I, I, it definitely will be. Yeah. Yeah yeah yeah. Now the other thing I just want to mention. I don't hear anybody in support of this in terms of people in, in, in the neighborhood. Um, you know, that, that one thing just you know, from you know, my you know, limited perspective of, of, of these things, having heard a few applications over the years, um, is that maybe the building needs to be smaller and there need to be more parking spaces. Okay. So, but I, I'm, I'm just one member of this board. Possibility, I'll talk to my client about it, Joe. Um. I, I think in terms of being efficient tonight, since we have Secra, there are a lot of neighbor concerns. The applicant needs to get us a lot of answers. Uh, my suggestion, it seems like it would be best to put this over to coordinate Secra so we can have the accurate information that we need to start talking about a decision. I agree. Okay. I agree. Okay. Just want to ask John if he wants to say a few words before we uh, um, adjourn. Uh, Judge, I'm... Um, um, Mr. Chairman, uh, I'm uh, cognizant of the comments. I'd like to uh, uh, represent to you that I will undertake speaking to the uh, adjacent neighbors personally, uh, and uh, I will have that done before uh, uh, we come back to see uh, this board again. Okay, thank you. I greatly appreciate that. Okay, uh, so next question is, um, how much time do we need um, uh, Katie to coordinate? Uh, well, we need the applicants to provide us with an EAF. Uh, I don't think we have that. We uh, We need additional copies of the application to coordinate. Anthony had recommended that um, it's likely the planning board would, would seek lead agency. Um, so if the ZBA didn't object to that, that would probably 
you know, speed things up with that. Um, we could put it on for a lead agency resolution. Um, if we get the EAF soon, we could put it on for a lead agency resolution. I think Ju July uh, 3rd, or no, July 1st. July 1st. Right, because we need 30 days um, for the coordination. And then Anthony, if, if the board, you know, designated the planning board as lead agency on July 1st, how long would you need to, you know, to do CICRA for that? I believe once a lead agency has been determined, I believe they have 20 days to make a secret determination. That is to okay. say, make deck, uh, conditional neg deck or pos deck. Okay. But, but so, pos deck will be more environmental review. That's right. And then okay. the time frames just they stop altogether, um, and then secret takes over. Okay. All right. So why don't we put it on solely for a lead agency determination for July first, and then maybe take testimony again August fifth, kind of just as a control date. Does that sound reasonable? Sure. Although if it's a pause deck, that date's going to be put over. For those people who are interested in this application, so yeah. pause deck. Sure, but the, you know, but our, our board would also probably want an update at that point, right? Yeah, sure. That's true. All sure. right. So be that. I'll put that in the form of a motion. I'll take Katie's uh, numbers as a motion. Okay. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. Uh, Mr. Tuthill. Aye. Ms. Kern. Aye. Ms. Burgess. Aye. Mr. Daly. Aye. Mr. Kelly. Aye. Mr. DeSessa. Aye. Chair votes aye. Thank you all for your testimony tonight. We greatly appreciate it. Thank you for hearing. So, so for the public, it would be, you know, keep, keep this on your calendar for August 5th. Yes. Okay. Seven one for a lead agency determination. Seven one yep. lead agency, eight five to continue the public hearing. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank all you right. All. Item six on the agenda. Item six on the agenda is East Quorum Development LLC, twelve East End Avenue in East Quorum, Suffolk County Tax Map nine hundred dash three one six dash one dash twenty three. Applicant requests the determination of the subject parcel, Suffolk County Tax Map number nine hundred dash. 316-1-23 is held in single and separate ownership from all adjacent parcels and thus entitled to relief pursuant to 313-115-D and any other relief necessary. The board has jurisdiction. We're looking for uh, Randy Whiteblock. He's in. Okay. Awesome. I think. <laughs> yeah, we don't see you, Randy. As PW. There we go. That's there Randy. He is. Or Randy, we just need to. Um, there, there you go. Okay. Uh, Good evening. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> Do you? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to find out. Yeah, oh gosh. Okay. So you can uh, tell us about the application. Uh, identify yourself. And okay, Randall White wrote 144 West Main Street, um, Bayshore, New York. Um, what we have here is a, well, which was once a single and separate parcel of approximately 10,000 square feet, um, which was acquired by William Swan um, as a tenant in common, and then over many years acquired full fee title. And while he was doing that, he was also targeting a 33 acre parcel next door adjacent to the address of which is 436 a montauk highway which is where my office was uh, also with that property he was a tenant in common um, and eventually took full fee title um, this was before my time but when bill passed all of his property was then conveyed into uh, an estate or trust um, which has then subsequently been liquidated. Uh, I think all of Bill Swan's properties have been for preservation uh, for the town of Southampton, except for property north of the railroad, which has been sold to the Discovery Land Company. 
um, the 33 acres, which this was adjacent to, was sold to develop, uh, Discovery Land Company um, back in 2017. Um, it really wasn't discussed or, or discovered uh, really by the estate that this should have been separated at the time. Uh, when you look at the single and separate search, you can see that there was kind of uh, a lot of movement of the properties, um, maybe lack of communication or not an understanding of the code at the time that they had three years in which to separate the properties. Um, they've always been treated as separate properties, separate tax bills, uh, separate addresses. Um, when you look at the community on East End Avenue, you'll see they're all like-kind properties, 10,000 square feet in size. They all enjoy an R10 uh, zoning setback uh, requirements. Um, I don't think that this um, would have an impact on the community. I think it would be a benefit to the community, particularly in that area. Um, if when you, again, when you look at the aerial, or you look at the tax maps, they're all like-kind situated. Um, and I think by such, this creates an affordable lot in East Quad. And that's the goal of uh, the estate of William Swan is to, to market this as a developable lot, put a, uh, a small modest home on it. Um, it's probably one of the last of their holdings. Um, and uh, that's why we're in front of you tonight. Okay, um, Randy, I had a question. Um, when you submitted the application, did you submit like a narrative or a breakdown of the relief being requested? Because yeah, I believe so. Okay. Yeah, it should have been a petition. Well, for some reason, it, I didn't have it amongst my submissions. Oh, so, sorry. Um, I just gave it to you. <laughs> <laughs> well, having something in writing is helpful too. If you have, if you already have something in writing, I can resubmit. Sure, absolutely. Okay, that, that would be great. And unless it may have already been submitted and somehow this didn't make it to our packets, but anyway. Yeah, there was a petition uh, included as far as the requested relief. Okay. Okay. Excellent. All right. Um, and besides that, um, this is vacant land, so there wasn't it wasn't mortgage, so it was never a house on it. That's um, cool. I don't think. Um, and I saw it's basically adjacent parcel D, um, common ownership to I, I got uh, to December of 2018. Well, if you go further back, you'll see it's William Swan, and then when when right. William Swan passed away, it went into Carolyn Parlotta, which is his daughter. Yeah. And then he put it into East Quad Development LLC. Yes. Uh, no, ultimately, but ultimately, yes. I, I I saw that the the common ownership was with parcel D. That's correct. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay. So, but you know, all the things that you said, stated in your testimony, that is part of our analysis uh, of these types of applications. Intent to merge. This is a vacant lot. It does not have any accessory structures on it. It hasn't had any accessory structures on it that benefit um, adjacent parcels. That's correct, and it is fenced. Uh, fully fenced in, okay. has been for some time. Okay, so no intent to merge. Um, and uh, all the other uh, items you mentioned about separate deeds, separate tax rent members, um, not used in conjunction with one another, which I just mentioned, uh, those are all factors uh, for us to consider. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I think we covered the bases. I'm not sure if there are any questions of members of the board of, uh, of uh, Randy. Uh, uh, Randy, I just want to know, did you have an opportunity to look at Dennis's comment, even though it doesn't relate to this single and separate. It's yes, I did. And we had, we had the, uh, the survey revised and I gave them to Candace on Friday. Yeah. Um, the intent with that was to show that if it, if it were to be like kind, which it is with the neighboring properties, they're all using R10 setbacks. So you would see what that would look like. But again, when this property comes in for development, um, it's my understanding that it would have to come back to you uh, for setback relief. I mean, we're not determining right now uh, what its zoning uh, category is. It's just yeah. simply a single and separate determination. Yeah. Just okay. something for the future that you should That's be correct. paying attention to. That's correct. That's all. Okay. Any other questions? Is there anyone from the public who's waiting to be heard this evening in connection with the application? Uh, on Zoom, in connection with the application of East Quag Development LLC, this is for property located at East Quag, uh, I'm sorry, 12 East End Avenue in East Quag. I see no hands. Okay. Randall, right. can I ask you uh, another question? That yes. I didn't, I didn't get the complete address. I, I wanted to know, the 33 acres, it was located, you said at 436, but I, I didn't get the... Montauk Highway. It's, it's the same property of the, as the farm stand. There's the small two-story 
And it's thir it was 33 acres, is that right? Uh, 32, <laughs> 32 and, and change, yes. Yeah. But the Williams Swan Estate owns yes. a huge amount of property. They all did. Over. I'm all ver over. very, very familiar with it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, uh, Keith, it is yours. All right. Uh, I'll move to uh, close the public hearing, leaving it open for written submissions till. What's it? What's our date for written subs? I'm sorry. Uh, the date is 6-3. Uh, 6-3. Six, three. Six, three. Uh, for written subs with a determination on uh, 6-17. Okay. Do we have okay. a second? Second. Um, just want to mention, including the written subs, Randy, you can get, uh, just make sure that we have the narrative. That's I will. I will. I'll submit it again tomorrow. Okay. Thank you. All, All right. right. Thanks, Mr. everybody. Thank you. Ms. Cuthill. Aye. Ms. Burgess. Aye. Ms. Kern. Aye. Mr. Daly. Aye. Mr. Kelly. Aye. Mr. DeSessa. Aye. Sure about Aye. Have a good night. Thanks, Thank Randy. You. Thank you. Okay, item seven on the agenda, IKRO Properties LLC, 65 Middle Pond Road in Shinnecock Hills. Suffolk County Tax Map 900-234-1-6.2. Applicant requests relief from the following provisions of the town code for the existing dwelling on a non-conforming lot. 330-84D, Pyramid Height, for the existing encroachment of 357.3 cubic feet on the west side, an encroachment of 16 cubic feet on the east side, and 330-11 residential table of dimensional regulations for a height of 32.85 feet where 32 feet is required and any other relief necessary. Board has jurisdiction. Good evening, Wayne. Good evening, board members. Uh, we've had a long evening so far. <laughs> um, I'm here tonight on behalf of I. IKRO Properties, LLC. I commonly call it EPRO Properties. Um, we're here tonight, as the notice indicates, for pyramid and height release, uh, relief. The premise is located on the northerly side of Middle Pond Road, approximately 241 feet east of Far Pond and Lillian Lane in Shinnecock Hills. The lot contains 20,254 square feet and is located in the R20 zoning district. The property is shown as parcel one of the minor subdivision of Edward and Winifred McDowell, which was approved on the, by the planning board in April of 1980. And that approval was based on a variance granted by this board because this lot, um, among other things, did not have the required lot width. In fact, the lot is trapezoidal in shape. It's wider along the street, approximately 110 feet in width. And at the rear lot line on the north, it's only 99 feet. So it narrows as it goes further to the north. The premises were improved at the time of the subdivision with a single family dwelling. And it was located approximately 20 feet from the northerly pro property line in a non-conforming location. The applicants acquired the property in 2017 um, they proceeded to demolish the non-conforming dwelling and deck at the time, and they had uh, obtained a building permit uh, for a new two-story dwelling, porches, decks, fireplace, uh, uh, garage, pool house, and ground pool. Uh, the construction of the dwelling required installation of an innovative alternative uh, wastewater treatment system. Um, the plan submitted to the building department showed a proposed first floor elevation of 10 feet, the plans that were submitted to the health department showed a first floor elevation of 12 feet, a little discrepancy there. Um, according to the applicant who is a builder, um, during the excavation, they encountered groundwater at a level higher than the surveyor and the engineer had uh, indicated on all the plans, um, which prompted them to raise the elevation of the septic system, which in turn required the first floor elevation to be raised. Um, and the dwelling proceeded with the construction. And at some point, the building department informed them that they wanted to see as built and were concerned possibly with the pyramid issue. The surveyor provided surveys um, 
which ultimately didn't comply to the building department's requirements because among other things, the height requirement requires it to be based on the average elevation at the front of the dwelling prior to any grade or, or fill being added. The surveys all that had been submitted to the building department showed no encroachments, but it was based on the finish grade. We were called in and to, to review this. At that point, we asked, uh, rather than going back to the surveyor, we went to Paul Delandro, uh, uh, Delandro Associates, an engineer, asked them to analyze this and uh, prepare documents uh, based on the surveys and records showing what the uh, elevation was, <clears throat> excuse me, prior to grade and Lo and behold, we found that there was a slight encroachment uh, on the pyramid, also an uh, encroachment on the height by approximately 10 and 3 16 inches on the height and encroachments uh, on, a little bit on the west side and, and slightly on the east side. Um, the dwelling, if you've seen pictures uh, on the east side, there is a bump out, uh, a dormer on the roof and about 16 cubic feet encroach on the pyramid on the east side. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the parcel narrows uh, to the rear. And as such, um, the setback along, uh, narrows on the back. Of the, so the back of the property um, on the west side, there's a bump out, also a dormer addition, and a sl slight portion of the roof encroaches. And the total encroachment, um, as indicated in the notice, um, the total en encroachment um, for the variances uh, pyramid is 373 cubic feet. It's 357 on the west side and 16 feet on the east side. And we even broke it down on the west side. Um, these encroachments are minimal. The encroachment on the height is the center portion of the roof. Um, it's eight tenths of a foot. Um, which is about 10 inches. Um, as far as the impact on the character of the neighborhood, if you looked at our uh, petition, you'll notice that this lot is surrounded by smaller lots on, to the west and to the east, except for to the northeast. Um, the property immediately to our east is a 10,000 square foot parcel, which this board granted pyramid relief for the two-story dwelling on that parcel. Uh, the parcel to the north of that, to our northeast, is rather large, but the immediate structure is their tennis court adjacent to our, the corner of the property here. The properties to the north were part of the original minor subdivision. In fact, the owner to the north was, uh, had owned this property and sold it to our client. Um, and their property, uh, although it doesn't have any variances, um, we also received uh, letters uh, from those neighbors and we provided those in the record where they've expressed no objections to the requested relief. We received one from the owner to the east, to the northeast and to the north. And as to the west, if you look at the tax maps, you'll see there's five flag lots and a common driveway that immediately exist to the west. Um, the first lot to the west, which arguably would be the most impacted by the westerly um, pyramid um, also provided us with a letter having no objections um, to the variance. Um, I believe our uh, petition outlines the rest of the, the matters. Uh, if the board has any specific questions on this, um, certainly uh, I, I want to commend the building department. Uh, they did, um, I think they've caught on to these issues and trying to catch them early on with how height and pyramid is measured. Um, they certainly have um, reviewed and made Mr. Delandro um, calculate the uh, height and encroachments. And we saw their no, uh, notice that they provided to the board, which acknowledged that his calculations were all done in accordance with the regulations. So if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer those. <sighs> Well, I have a height question, uh, Wayne. Um, I'm trying to trying to follow along here. So, you're saying the height has to be measured from before any fill or finish gets added. Um, so, what is the height of this as the property is finished now? How high is it above the the finished grade? 
Is that the 3285 or is it 3285 from before fill was added? It's the 3285 is before the fill was added. So, so what is it after? if you measure it from finished grade, it's probably two feet less. It's probably more right. like 30 feet. Right. So where it looks now, it's 30 feet and change probably. Yeah, probably. Okay. Yeah, and the way I, I look uh, you know, at applications for in a circumstance like this with building permits where there was a, you know, an error by professionals, um, is you know, what would we do if it was an application for proposed relief versus uh, you know, a, as built? And you know, the reality is the numbers, the, the cubic feet of pyramid relief is minimal. Uh, we don't generally like to grant height relief, but the, but the argument that you know, less than a foot of extra height relief is gonna impact the neighbors is a hard argument to successfully make, although we'll see if any of the neighbors are gonna uh, give testimony tonight. Just as a reminder, again, the neighbors that um, we did um, also actually notice as well that already provided letters for the record. Um, okay. It was immediately <laughs> surrounding the property. Okay. Thank you. All right. Any other only... I'm sorry. No, I'm just the, the height issue. Uh, we always have a, you know, concern with that because we usually don't grant relief in an X zone for height. So, um, Wayne, do we have uh, anything in terms of an, an estimate? To we don't to have an estimate, but as I stated in the petition, the 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 uh, entire roof would have to be totally redesigned and and everything taken off. It isn't a matter of just merely you know cutting off eight, uh, ten inches. Um, it's not that easy. So it is significant. If you want, I can get him to get us a proposal if you want sure. that in the record yeah i think it would be to your uh, client's uh, uh, interest is it is that. it 10 and is it 10 inches across the entire roof it's the center portion which is approximately 18 by 35 i think the uh architect provided a, a, a cubic it's roughly 599 cubic feet uh, when you take the uh, 10 inches across that portion of the roof but that but that's my question you said you'd have to take off the entire roof so is it the entire roof that that is too high or just the center portion well it's when, when you look at the elevation you'll see when i call it the center you know when you when you take from the pitch um it's only that portion that is encroaching above so it isn't like it's a flat roof over the entire uh footprint so, so that's what i meant by the center portion of the roof it's only um, at its apex or elevation. There's a flat portion there. Right, but it would require a section of the roof being taken off. Basically. Yeah, it would require that entire roof, you know, to be restructured because that is at the peak. All right, um, any other questions of members of the board? Uh, Katie, do you have any other questions? Anthony? Nope. Okay. All right. Is there anyone from the public who's waiting to be heard this evening in connection with the application of um, uh, Ecro. Ecro. Yeah. Ecro Properties LLC or property located at um, 65 Middle Pond Road in Shinnecock Hills? I have Here's anyone? Paul Benacosta that wants to speak. Okay. Very good. Carl, put your video on, sir. <laughs> I think we can see and hear you now. Oh, unfortunately, we see you. <laughs> see you all. And thank God we don't hear him. Yeah. <laughs> TV. Uh, I just right, wanted good to. Evening. Good evening. Good to see you all. I wanted to give some context um, as to the background with this property. Uh, I represent. Um, People, uh, two people in contract to purchase this home. We've actually been in contract since uh, November. The uh, Obviously, we were waiting on the CO and this issue to rise well into the contract period. And we've sort of been in this holding pattern ever since. Um, 
as Wayne noted, the relief requested is, is generally minimal. Uh, there's no opposition that we know of from the neighborhood. And I understand this board has to go through its process, but my clients have been extending rate locks now for six months and uh, are trying to, although we can't occupy it, we may be in a position where we'd be forced to close on this before a formal decision is, is issued. Obviously we can't occupy until the CO is in place, um, but given their rate lock issue. So I know this is unconventional, but I'm, I'm just looking for a sense from the board as to where they would lean on this, um, uh, presuming no additional information is provided and we don't think there, there would be. Because my clients may be in a position where they would have to close on this before formal group of variances issue. Okay. Yeah, I'm fine, Wayne. I, I just did have one question. It, it, at what point or how did, it's probably a question for Wayne, not, not Carl. Um, just the house got too big. When did you realize? Did they stop building? Was it after they built? I, I just need that clarified for the record. If I may, I'll answer that. According to my client, you know, um, the issue pretty much was when the roof and everything was finished and they were advised when the builder went to the surveyor and asked him to address it. When the building department brought it to their attention, he went to the surveyor um, and asked them to address this. And, and that's part of the confusion is the surveyor, and I provided a copy of the survey they submitted, um, among other things, to the building department. And it was a series of them. It, and I don't know exactly what was occurring, but they were going to the building department. The surveyor was providing surveys and the building department was telling them they, that he was doing it wrong or they needed more information as to, you know, he was doing an elevation on the front of the house. He was doing an elevation on the rear of the house, uh, a, var a variety of things. But in the end, he was also using the elevation uh, the final grade elevation. And in each case, he was showing that there was no encroachment on the pyramid. So they were under the understanding that there was no problem, no problem, no problem. But the building department ultimately was not buying that the surveyor was doing the proper calculation for pyramid, particular since it was based on, you know, finished grade. So finally, this had to come to a head because the building uh, you know, department wasn't going to process the CO and everything else. And I think Carl um, was jumping in on behalf of his client to find out what was going on. And he probably heard some of the same arguments. And, and that's when I got hired in, in February to more or less address this. And that's when we got uh, Delandro rather than the, the prior surveyor to, to do the analysis. And, and that is what the building department accepted. Uh, on it, the it, wasn't a, it wasn't a situation, Wayne, where it was realized and they continued to build despite realizing this issue. No, I think they didn't realize it until uh, obviously the house was up and then the building department, someone brought it to their attention. Um, okay. You know, arguably two things. Number one, when I go back in the records, the information nor the pyramid analysis was not part and parcel of the original building permit application. And, and they would have, and, and that I understand is now part of the current building department requirements. In fact, it's been something that the building department has been holding up your applications unless the surveyors show that, which is we need to know what are, what is the existing grade at the front of the proposed house as part of the application. And if they had done that, they would have realized they would have had issues or would have been close. And thus, when when the contractor, you know, changed the elevation because of the uh, septic system, they would have realized then that they should have, uh, you know, might have had a pyramid uh, issue or otherwise. But I appreciate that. You know, I think the town is, is, is taking that on head on. And I think you're, you're going to see less and less of those types of issues that get to a point where the whole house is finished before they realize there's a problem. Yeah, I can, I can reiterate what Wayne said. I was, no, I, I think uh, I'm, I'm okay with that. I mean, it's, yeah. I'm good. I don't know if the board has any other questions, but I'm, I get it. I'm okay with it. And I'm, and I'm okay with it too. Okay. So. Who so am I? Yep. 
I am as well. I do have a question for you, Wayne, just administratively. The only thing I see in my file is a second FICO survey. You said the final is actually a Delandro survey? It's not a, it, it's not a Delandro survey. So what we did is if you go in the files, you'll see the second FICO surveys. And you'll right. see, for example, the survey they submitted to the building department, which had a pyramid sketch on, on the left-hand side of that. So what we did is we asked uh, Seca Pico to take off any analysis on the pyramid and just provide the final as-built survey with spot okay. elevations. And we then asked Delandro to go back in the record based on the original elevations on plans and surveys and other documents, establish what the grade was prior to that, uh, and, and then uh, also take the existing elevations and they're all based on the surveys that are there. So the final survey is the Seca Pico survey, but you'll notice there's no pyramid calculations or otherwise on that final survey. It just shows the setbacks and, and so on. But the Delandro uh, elevations show you the entire pyramid analysis. Gotcha. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't have, I, I agree with Chairman and Brian and Keith. Um, I don't have an issue with it. No, neither. Just make sure you get um, the information in. Yeah, that's all. Right. Yes. Um, we'll have a little bit of time to get your, because we're doing for tonight. Oh, I'm sorry. I, we still got to wait for neighbors or whatever. Well, actually, I already did. I'm not, just ask if there's anyone else. Is there anyone else in the public way to be heard on Zoom in connection with uh, uh, the application of uh, IKRO Properties LLC for 65 Middle Pond Road in Shinnecock Hills? No hands. No hands. Okay. Then for okay. Years, it's yours. All right. So, Wayne, if you get us that uh, cost estimate when you can, and as with all the applications tonight, we're going to close the public hearing, leaving it open for written submissions until June 3rd with a decision on June 17th. Thank you. Thank you all. Second. Second. We, have a second. we have a second. Okay. Um, Mr. Kelly. Aye. Mr. Tuthill. Aye. Um, Mr. Daly. Mr. Daly, um, you're <laughs> sorry. I, I, I. Okay. Um, Ms. Kern. Aye. Um, um, uh, Ms. Burgess. Aye. Ms. Decessa. Aye. Everyone, aye. Thank you both for uh, your comments tonight. Thank you. Have a good rest of your evening. Get home. <laughs> uh, All right. Under re-advertised applications, number eight, Candace. <laughs> Clanahan, 8 Neptune Avenue in Hampton, Maine, Suffolk County Tax Map, 900-258-4-42. Applicant requests for leave for the following provisions of the town code for a proposed accessory apartment within an existing dwelling and a non-conforming lot. 330-11.2 special standards. For one, to allow an accessory apartment to be located in a lot that is less than 30,000 square feet. Two, a lot area of 6,000 square feet where 16,000 square feet is required. 80% of the required 20,000 square feet. Two, a lot width of 60 feet where 84 feet is required. 70% of the required 120 feet. Three, a principal front yard setback of 24 feet where 24, 28 feet is required from the Wesley property line, Hampton Road, 70% of the required 40 feet. Four, a principal minimum side yard setback of 9.7 feet, where 14 feet is required, 70% of the required 20 feet. And five, a principal rear yard setback of 29.6 feet, where 42 feet is required, 70% of the required 60 feet. Two, 330 dash. 11.2 G to allow the size of the accessory apartment to be in excess of 30% of the total floor area of the principal dwelling. And three, 330-11.21 to allow the entrance to the accessory apartment, basement entrance to be, excuse me, lost my line, to be in a rear yard. In addition, applicant requests relief from the following provisions of the town code, 330-77G, placement of accessory buildings, structures, and uses of residence districts to allow the AC unit to be located 8.5 feet plus or minus 
from the East Lee property line where 10 feet is required, and two, to clarify the records. Relief from 330-11, residential district's table of dimensional regulations for a principal front yard setback of 36.4 feet, where 40 feet is required for the front covered porch. And any other relief necessary. Uh, the board has jurisdiction. And be before these guys start, I just want to explain something to the board. This, you heard this application um, at our April 1st meeting. And you know, we took testimony from Candace. We took testimony from her brother, the architect. Um, everything seemed fine. And when Keith read it out, I had just asked our Candace if we had advertised it correctly because it just it it seemed like the you know the lot it needed more relief. So they're going to go through you know the the variances that were called out. But you did hear testimony on this. You did talk about this. The application hasn't changed. We just didn't call out the correct um, variances that were needed. Thank you, Katie. Yep. Okay, appreciate it. All right, so who's here on behalf of the applicant? Candace Clenian, myself, okay. and my brother, Zachary, the, okay. the architect. Very, very good, and, and we, you were previously sworn in? Yes. Okay, then you're still sworn in. Okay. <laughs> All right, so, so tell us where, where we are. Okay, so um, hello to all the board members. My name is Candace. My sister Melissa and I own the house together. Um, as uh, was said, I was here last month with the same application. My understanding is that the application needed to be re-advertised to include the necessary variances from the accessory apartment section of the town code. Um, I would like to incorporate my last testimony from the April 1st hearing if possible, um, yeah. just to save you from having to hear it again. But if you want me to say it again, I have no problem doing it. You don't have to say it again. It's all on the record already. Okay. And that's, so it's pretty much the same. Um, I don't know if, if you have any questions or comments well, for me. Go ahead. Yeah, oh, I was just gonna ask you to, to clarify. Um, I, I know we have, uh, you know, a, uh, you know, it's, we did the re-advertising and I, you know, Kate, Katie just mentioned about, uh, you know, some relief that wasn't previously advertised. I don't know if you know the additional relief that was advertised this time that wasn't last time? Um, well, I, I, think a, I think a lot of it is just for the existing structures, but I think it is worth, Candace, just kind of talking about, um, you know, the, the size of the accessory apartment because it's in the basement, um, you know, just, you know, because some of the variances are just for the structures as they already exist, but the, you know, the size of the apartment might be worth getting into. Um, the AC units, the board definitely didn't talk about that. Yeah, so before we came, the last time I was told that it needed to be five feet from the side yard, but now I was told it needed to be 10 feet. So that's where the variance came in. Um, but I, the re-advertising, I didn't know that that needed to be done until Candace told me. Um, I thought it was all there. So I wasn't trying to keep anything from you. <laughs> no, yeah, not that we didn't think so either. Okay. It's just, it's just that we want to have a complete record. And so, yeah. as Katie mentioned, the things that we didn't talk about last time, we just want to have testimony on the record about about them. So, uh, about the accessory apartment, about the air conditioning unit. Okay, so maybe I'll I, maybe Zachary should talk to you about like the size of the apartment and yeah. whoever you That'd want. Okay, I can, I can speak. Uh, I was sworn in already as well. Okay, very good. Um, I'm Zachary hey, Clanahan. Hey, I'm not. Hey. I'm Candace's brother. Okay. Uh, so when I read the, um, I think it's Zachary, section. I'm sorry, can you just state your full name? I'm sorry, Zachary Clanahan. Sorry. Okay, thank, thank you. Uh, when I read section G, uh, item one, I think I made a mistake. It, I, it said total square feet or total floor area. So I included all the areas that are finished. And then I was, uh, Candace clarified that for me that I had to um, just count habitable space and compare habitable space to habitable space. So that's why there's a difference in the numbers where it went from 34.9, I think, to 39.3. So I apologize so what for that. What is the percentage? What is the percentage now? 39.3%. And is that because it's the whole the whole basement? Is it run the whole? The no, it's not the basement? whole basement. I just counted the two habitable spaces that are proposed in the basement, the flex space and the bedroom and nothing else. The bathroom wasn't counted. That was excluded. The built-ins, all that was excluded out. Okay. And I did provide this in a letter as well. It's all broken down in the updated letter. Yeah. So basically, we're just breaking down the relief in some more detail. 
but the application is the same application that we heard before, but we didn't cover everything in a prior public hearing, which is really why we're just trying to you know, tight, basically tighten the record up. And we submitted um, new drawings with the square footage in each room in all the spaces to show the habitable space that was counted and calculated okay. to get to the 39.3. Um, may I speak to the architect again? Sure. Okay. Um, what's your first name again? Zachary. Zachary. Um, did you have an opportunity to look at Mr. O'Hara's comments? Uh, Dennis's comments, they were, they were uh, related to the um, habitable square footage. Well, there's more than the habitable. Oh, there is? Yes. Have you, did you read it? I thought I'd read it all. So please uh, highlight to me if I missed something. I'm sorry. Okay. The architect shall provide the following documentation information in order to verify the percentage ratio of the total floor area, that's habitable living space, of the proposed accessory apartment in relation to the main dwelling. We've been talking about that. Okay. A floor plan of the main dwelling which will include the area of each habitable living space, a floor plan of the accessory apartment. Continued on next page, which shall include the area of each habitable living space. The plan submitted with the application does not include this information. A letter indicating the total habitable living space of the main dwelling, the total habitable living space of the accessory apartment and the percentage ratio between the two. Okay. Um, Although the current C of O includes a front porch, this was not originally part of the variance decision number 7084 granted for the proposed house. Therefore, relief from town code section 330-11 is required for a front yard setback of 36.4 feet, where 40 feet is required, and three, it, is, it has been determined that the westerly property line, Hampton Road, is a front yard. So those are the comments that Mr. O'Rourke had on May 3rd. And did you receive that sheet with his comments on it? I did, yes. And I updated the plans to uh, with all of his requirements. And you uh, dealt with the front porch? We, we advertised it for that relief, Ellen. I can't hear you. We, we advertised it. We advertised it for the relief to legalize, the, to address the porch. OK. And um, just to also let you know, the, the, the Hampton Road area, which is the, the front yard on the east, on the west, um, that I'm, I'm going before to get it abandoned. It's almost finalized, the abandonment of it. And then I'm gonna ask for a special exception that the front yard is removed. So hopefully that'll mitigate that. So your front yard is Neptune Avenue, correct? Yes. Okay, and one of the requirements for an accessory apartment, which has a entrance, a basement entrance in the front yard is screening. Have you, per, have you discussed that? Have you provided for it? I don't see it on the plans. Yes, well, we are, we are planning to do the screening. However, the board decides they want us to do it, but we, we, we don't want it to show from the street either. We want it to hide it. We don't. Right, so, but it's not reflected on your plans at this point, correct? We had mentioned in the last hearing that we were going to provide uh, screening as per the requirements. Okay, one other question I have is that I understand from the code that accessory apartments require one parking space to be allocated off street parking. And where is that going to be? So we have uh, an existing space that's been there for 17 years. Uh, that's on it's the west side. Your asphalt driveway, is that it? No, it's it's actually gravel. Oh, okay. And so when once that abandonment is done, and then if I can get if I get the the exception made for the front yard removal, we would we would propose to put it there. So I guess the the correct answer is that it's pending the abandonment of the um, Hampton Road side, because it is currently there, and once the abandonment goes, it would serve as the off street parking space for the uh, accessory apartment. And, and I mean, this is a, a multi layer, you know, the thing uh, uh, process with, with, with an accessory apartment. So first, you're looking to get relief from our, our board uh, related to those aspects of the, what's on the property um, and what's being proposed that don't conform to zoning. But then you have to live up to the accessory apartment law itself. 
And in order to get the accessory apartment permit, you're going to have to satisfy all requirements that are in that, you know, in, in that section of our, of our code. Um, so, um, um, Ms. Kern, I'm glad you brought up a, you know, a couple of issues that are important for the applicant to be aware of that they're going to have to take care of. Okay. So that, that little piece of Hampton Road, which comes off of Neptune right now, is uh, a paper road, I guess, that mm -hmm. you're looking to get abandoned. Okay. Yeah, the 20 feet. Doesn't connect. The one half doesn't, closest. Yeah. Sorry. Gotcha. Doesn't connect to anything else. And that's what uh, creates the front yard for your side entrance to the proposed accessory department. No, it's not. The proposed accessory is not on the front yard. That's on the east side. And that neighbor put in a letter of support. I have three letters of support from all the neighbors that would that are nearest adjoining the property. Gotcha. Um, and that neighbor also said if they needed to say more, they would uh, that, to show support. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know, it is when we have the accessory apartment applications also a lot of the relief that's in the application is relief for structures as they presently exist. So, so if you look at the application, like, wow, it's an enormous amount of relief that's being requested, but a lot of the relief is just for what's currently there that has COs, uh, and I would imagine. Um, so, uh, you know, just, it, it is, uh, um, you know, just something to keep in, in you know, in that, that we deal with that is a kind of a, an aspect of these type, types of applications that you, you have to ask for relief for things that you already have approval for, <laughs> essentially, for the purpose of the accessory apartment law. Okay. Any other questions or members of the board? Katie, Can, Katie do we yeah, cover that? Uh, no, I just was going to ask, is, is the setback for the air conditioner 8.5 8 feet? What is it? it? I it believe says, it's eight, <laughs> 8 feet 2 inches. Like, do you have the survey? What does it say? The survey doesn't say on it. Survey? Okay, we need that on the survey then. You know, any, that any, needs to be on the survey. Yeah, and any uh, thing that relief, dimensional or otherwise, any relief that you need needs to be on the survey or a pyramid relief and a pyramid. Yeah, well, so when we had the survey done, we were told we didn't need relief because it was five feet. Right, right. And we were oh, over. Yeah. But, but yeah. if you need relief for it, then, then it yeah. needs to be reflected. The measurement needs to be on the survey. So it, it on that it hard to get him to update it because he has it already in, in CAD, so he can just throw the dimension on there. Okay. It was Gary Benz who did it, right, Candace? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I can talk to him tomorrow. To get him Great. Very helpful. Okay. Any other we'll get you whatever you want. <laughs> and any other questions? I'm okay questions? with the application. Uh, yeah, as long as you get all your I's dotted and T's crossed uh, on, you know, what's required uh, on the survey and things like that. Is there anything else you want us to have the surveyor update on there while we're while we're talking about? Because I'll make sure I just get him to do it in one in one shot. Just make sure all the relief that's being requested is included. That, that okay. Between the survey and any other solution. dimensions to each thing. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That, that is that require relief. Yeah. Did so, you want us to show the off street parking location on the updated survey too? Would that be helpful? If, sure. if you have a compliant location for it, definitely, because the building department will need that. If you don't have a compliant location for it and it's dependent upon that road abandonment, you know, then you're going to have to wait. But if you have somewhere it complies, put it on there. It's 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 pending the relief because it's like half on, half off right now. Yeah. And and, the, and if, if you um, submit something and then it has to be revised, then you may have to come back to us. Um, you would have to come back to us if... if the, uh, you know, what is going to be on the on the parcel is going to change. But, you know, I understand you're you're waiting for a separate approval, and that may take some time. Um, so I'll leave it to you to decide how you want to handle that. Okay. Um, you, I don't think we have to have uh, you know the the parking space uh, you know on the survey. So, but but as Katie said, if there is a location currently, why not put it on there? But but maybe that's not the location ultimately you're going to want. Maybe. You, you're waiting for this approval to have it located somewhere else. Yeah, or, or if you want a variance for it. Right. The, the spot that is currently being used is on the survey. It's just not, a, it's not at this point a compliant spot. You know, it, it doesn't comply until that front yard is removed. Okay. 
So does that, like, what, what do we need to do in order to like get a decision? Mm-hmm. That's what I'm kind of wondering. <laughs> what are is you there, asking is us there, to do? Is there a parking space that's on a survey that the ZBA has? Yes. Okay. And, and you're saying it, but it's in the, um, it doesn't comply because it's, Half on, half off of the paper road. Yeah, it's okay, but it's it's not on the property itself. It is. It's on the property, but it's also overlapping into the paper road. Because right now, basically, the the paper road is woods, and so they just carved that out over the years as a parking. Is that considered your property? Nope. Not yet. So the the road (laughs) is not considered your property. Not yet. No, no. But they they always said abandoned. Is it considered your property? Yes. Yes. If it gets abandoned, then it okay. would become property. Okay. Right. The, he'll share. They'll share half with the other uh, adjacent lot. Okay. Okay. Just leave it. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Um, any other questions, members of the board? Is there anyone from the public who is waiting to be heard this evening in connection with the application of Clanahan? This is for property located at Eight Neptune Avenue in Hampton Bays. Uh, if you're waiting to be heard on Zoom. Uh, this will be the time to let us know by raising your hand. No hands. No hands. Okay. So um, I would move um, that we close the public hearing except for written submissions, the submissions that we discussed. Um, the deadline for written submissions is going to be June 3rd. And I will have a decision ready at our June 17th meeting. Second. Mr. Daly. Aye. Ms. Burgess. Aye. Ms. Kern. Aye. Mr. Kelly. Aye. Mr. Tuthill. Aye. Mr. DeSessa. Aye. Chair Votsai. Thank you both uh, for uh, being here this evening. Thank you, all of you. Thank Have you. a good night. Yeah. Thank you for your time tonight. Good night. Yeah. Thanks. Good night. night. I am not, I am not on the agenda is John and Audrey Newhouse, 61 Harbor Drive in Noyak. Suffolk County tax map 900-9-3-36.1. The public hearing for this application was closed on September 17, 2020, and left open for written submissions to allow the applicant time to make an application to the Town Conservation Board. This application is being reopened for further testimony. Oh, the board has jurisdiction. Okay, um, looking to see uh, who's here on behalf of the applicant. It's the applicant. I remember. Can uh, it's John Newenhouse? Can you see me? We can see you, but um, half of you. Like half oh, of you. Okay. Like, All right. Yeah. Well, hang on. Let me see. A different part of the screen. Here. There we go. Okay, that's better. Okay. Well, you were previously sworn in. Um, I was. Okay, but if you can uh, give us an update as to where, where we are, where you are. All right, um, last, good evening, everybody. And I know it's been a long night. I'll try to be brief. Uh, September 17th, we had the hearing um, on which uh, pretty much everything, I believe you were in consensus of um, agreeing with. Uh, part of my uh, proposal included um, wetlands permit to um, extend into the wetlands area. And I believe Helen wanted the um, conservation board application submitted and moving along before you guys continued on your process. Um, As a result of the wetlands permit process, I found it necessary to increase the elevation of the first floor of the house by one foot and raise the rim of the pool 18 inches above deck to get me six feet of usable water inside the pool By doing that, um, I haven't changed any other um, requests for variances as far as uh, rear yard setback, side yard accessory setback, any any setbacks. The footprint of the house has not changed any. However, I've increased the pyramid height uh, intrusion from originally proposed 298 cubic feet to 487 cubic feet, which is about 189 cubic foot increase. Uh, And that's why um, the you should have received if I dropped off on Monday to Candace surveys had the 
Conservation yeah. Board um, received and accepted survey, as well as their adopted resolution, uh, which was not a, not a permit issue. I'm still working through the covenant required to um, finalize all of that. Okay. So yeah, so this is why uh, pretty much um, you know we have been putting it over was was to get for you to go through that process. Yes, and I understood. Okay, and at and at this point, um, I'm not sure if the, the what you submitted on Mondays made it to us. Um, let me let me just see. We might have gotten it. I did submit a packet a week ago Monday, which you should yeah. have received. Yeah. It's rather large. Um, okay. If you go to page 17. It's a, um, a um, profile of the property of the proposed building structure that shows yep. three areas of pyramid intrusion, A, B, and C. Yep. And uh, it's, it's quite insignificant. Um, I did list a number of properties last time in my hearing, which I can review if you'd like. No, uh, you don't need to read. Okay. We already gave your testimony. And we, I do, we, we do have. Uh, your submission okay, okay. so that this is uh very helpful but but basically like the other application you know um this one needed to be uh reopened because we you know, needed to address uh this all this new information understood uh, yeah yeah okay all right um any uh other questions members of the board or katie or anthony Adam, I think for your notes, I just brought up the advertisement from the first time. Um, we also advertised it for 76D and 83C for the placement of the pool. Okay. Because um, it's going to be within the required front yard. So just, you know, keep that in there too. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. All right. Um, if there are any, aren't any other questions, I want to ask if there is anyone from the public who's waiting to be heard this evening on <laughs> Zoom. In connection with uh, the application of Newen House, this is for property located at 61 Harbor Drive in Noyak. If you are waiting to be heard on Zoom, this would be the time to let us know by raising your hand. No hands. Okay. All right. If not, I believe we have everything we need at this point, which is a good thing. Um, and so I would move that we close the application uh, this evening, uh, except for written submissions. The deadline for written submissions is June 3rd. And I will have a decision ready on our June 17th meeting. Second. Mr. Daly. Aye. Mr. Kelly. Aye. Ms. Kern. Aye. Ms. Burgess. Aye. Mr. Tuthill. Aye. Mr. Sessa. Aye. Mr. Botai. Thank you for being here. Have a good rest of your night. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Good night. Take care. Good night. <laughs> Item 13 on the agenda is 135 New Light LLC, 135 New Light Lane in Bridge Hampton, Suffolk County Tax Map 900 84 1 33.2. Okay, who's here on behalf of the applicant? Uh, we're looking for Harry. Uh, They're coming. Okay. okay. All right, this will be in. There we go. Okay. Good evening, everybody. And I know you previously testified, so um, you can maybe give us an update. Sure. So a couple of items. Uh, circling back to last week, or excuse me, it was last month, we withdrew the tennis court application after reviewing with the Bridge Schneiders, the neighbors. Um, we agreed to install the 20-foot evergreen screening along the, the shared boundary line up into the rear, the rear line of the Bridge Schneider property. And we asked for one more um, holding it over one more time to just review the, the height calculations one more time. Uh, between now and then, um, and then today, actually, I submitted a statement in support just to have a, just more of a record uh, for the board to review after we uh, finish up tonight. And we're just appearing tonight to answer any other questions and um, uh, close the file, uh, close the hearing after that to uh, move towards a decision. 
Okay. Um, so maybe you can tell me exactly, I know you mentioned the tennis court, uh, exactly what the changes were. Uh, if, if, besides the tennis court, is the application otherwise the same? Yes. So there was two parts to this variance. There was the height variance to get a variance for the 1.4 or one feet, one foot, four inches above the 32 foot permitted height. And the second half of it was the tennis court area variance in the back. And then we we're no longer proceeding with the tennis court variance. So that's all off the table. It's solely just the, the height variance for the, uh, the roof line. Okay. All right. So the height variance is 32 feet to 33.33 feet, four inches, according to my notes. Yes. Um, okay. So that remains the same. Yes. Okay. And then it's part of my uh, submission was I included a letter from the builder uh, explaining the, the timeline and uh, how it was discovered. I submitted his estimate for the for uh, bringing the roof down hypothetically, and then um, some comparable decisions in the last five years. So that'll be, that's in with, uh, with Candace for, for the board's review. Okay, very good. Um, I don't have any other questions. Are there questions from members of the board or, or Katie or Anthony? Okay, if not, um, I would, uh, wanted to ask if there's anyone from the public who is waiting to be heard on Zoom this evening in connection with the application of 135 New Light LLC. This is for property located at 135 New Light Lane in Bridgehampton. If there's um, anyone who's waiting to be heard, this would be the time. Okay. Hello. So, Hi, Joe. Hi. I, I just wanted to thank Henry. He, um, he covered everything we were concerned about, which is putting in the 20 to 22 feet border along um, the, the, the shared border line. So we're good with that. Okay, very good. All right, uh, any other questions or comments? Okay, if not, thank you for your comments, Joan. Um, Keith, I believe this uh, application is now yours. And thank you very much. All right, well, um... I'll make a motion that we uh, close the public hearing for written submissions on uh, June 3 and a determination on 617. Okay, just want to ask before we vote on the motion, uh, um, is there anyone else who's waiting to be heard on Zoom in connection with this application? 135 New Light Lane in Bridgehampton. No. So I move on the motion. Okay. All right. Do we have a second? Second. Mr. Tuthill. Aye. Ms. Burgess. Aye. Ms. Kern. Aye. Mr. Daly. Aye. Um, um, Mr. Kelly. Aye. Mr. DeSessa. Aye. Joe goes aye. Thank you for your comments this evening. Thanks, everyone. Okay. Take care. I, I, Take care, John. I, 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 Item 14 on the agenda, which is under holdover applications, is Liliana and Danzo, 22 Lakewood Avenue in East Cork, Suffolk County Tax Map 900-339-1-47 and 902-4-2022. Okay. I'm going to find out uh, who's here on behalf of the, app the applicant. He's coming. Okay. Hello? Hello. 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 Put your video on. You. There you go. There you go. Okay. We can't. I still can't see you yet. Yep, she's on. Um, my, oh. I'm sorry, my architect trying to get in also. Okay. What's his name? Alex. Okay. Alex. Okay. okay. Right. I can see you now. Okay. So, uh, um, uh, if you can uh, just give us an update as to where we are. Okay. Um, I got everything. What you need? What What you asked me? Uh, which is um, uh, have the um surveyor 
have there a small shed to show in the survey to put it, you know, the one that is going to move to the side of the house. Um, and also you asked me about the bee shed. Um, some uh, uh, dimensions about the uh, pyramid of law or something like that. Okay. So, um, okay, Katie, do you have in your in, in your notes exactly what we what we need to uh, what we requested information on? Um, I think she's right. I think she we, we wanted the something about the small shed. We wanted an architect's letter that the shed could you know withstand um, you know withstand a storm. I'm just looking at my agenda, and we also had been waiting for the village of. Quag's comments, which we did get. Yep. Uh, let me just look at my quick or five, six. Um, 415. Uh, I'm sorry, my, my architect is trying to get in. He can't get in for some reason. And what's all? What is Joel? his name? His his name is Alice Cahan. Yeah, I don't see anyone with that name. I see Monica, I see Michael, Howard, and that's uh, it. There's only three people in. And he he can't see the hand. He's not in. He's not in at all. He's not in? Okay. No. Wait, let me let me say okay. He's not on the Zoom. All right, well, while, while she's looking for him, we had asked that the uh, boundary line be added, which it was because we forwarded it to the village. Um, we had asked for the letter for the shed. Um, and like she said, the shed, lo you know, the shed location, I guess, for the other shed to clarify if one was moving or one was staying. Um, and then I had I had mentioned to her that the village of Quag had um, concerns about the metal shed, so I thought the board would want to talk about that a little bit. Yeah, and I had concerns about the metal shed too. Okay, um, hold on a second. Um, um, uh, name. Okay. Um, okay. Um, I went to the town of Quag. Yep, okay. the village. Yeah, the village, because of the letter that they sent. Yep. Um, and what they say is that um, uh, they show me where I can put the, the metal shed, which is, is impossible. And they say I have to apply for variances to do that, to move that shed or to leave that shed where it is right now. That's what we are right now. Yeah. Well, I'm not sure whether there are four votes for that for, for, to leave the metal shed where it is right now. I don't know where other board members are. I'm not in, in favor of it. Neither am I. Mm -mm. What do you mean? I don't... The metal shed may need to go to either a conforming location I don't know if there is one, or it may need to be removed. No, there there is no location. I'm applying for a variance yeah. uh, with the town of um, Quag. Uh, excuse, uh, Adam, would it be better to have uh, a situation where the architect is here? Right, the the architect is is, is trying to get in. Well, well, I, well I, we're gonna glad, we'll be glad to hear from your architect as soon as soon as he's uh, um, in the Zoom meeting. Okay. Yeah, he's not. He's not on the Zoom meeting. What about is LDK? Is he LDK? Um, no. There's no conforming location. Get rid of it. Yeah, if the, I think that what what's being said is oh. that there is no conforming location, you may have to remove it because it doesn't appear like this board is going right. to approve that shed on the property. Right, but then the, uh, I went over there and they said, I got to apply for variances. 
And right. then and we're saying no. Going to, going to get it or not? No. That, yeah. That's, hold what on. You, hold that's what you need the architect to explain yep. to you. No. But hold, hold on a second. They need the village variants, right? Yeah, the village variants. That's what I'm, I, I'm going to, uh, to apply for it. Okay. Oh, okay. Take, take a look at the letter because, or, or the, the email yeah. we got from them. No, that's that's that Adam. That is what they said. The, yes. the village of Clog does not like does not like the shed, right? Um, and and they would not want this board to grant a variance. So I guess what Liliana is saying is she'll go to the village for a variance. Right. 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 That's what I'm saying. Okay. okay. All right. Well, you can feel free to do that. Okay. Okay. But other than that, um, I think, uh, I believe we have everything we need. Any other questions or members of the board? Is there anyone from the public who, who is waiting to be heard on Zoom this evening in connection with the application of Danzo? This is for property located at 22 Lakewood Avenue? Yes. Okay. No, wait a second. He's coming in now, Alex. Ale <laughs> That's 22 Liquid Avenue East Quad. Yeah. Here's the architect. Okay, the architect. Okay, very good. Hello? Okay. Hello. Good evening. I'm so sorry. I've been trying to get in. All right. Okay, that's all right. I think I have to swear you in unless you testified previously, which I don't think you did. Sure, absolutely. Uh, Alexander Khan. I'm an architect. And your what address, you please? Uh, 2103 Wave Avenue, Medford, New York, 11763. And do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Okay. So maybe you could get, give us a little bit of information. Uh, our board is really not very happy with the metal shed that's on the property. Um, I understand. Um, we yeah. plotted the line for the village of Quag, and it seems the shed is entirely off the jurisdiction of the town. Mm -hmm. Then you'll apply to the village, and maybe it'll be granted, and maybe it won't be. Okay, we understand. Can we get the rest of the board application to have a motion? Well, we're gonna close it tonight and then we're gonna have a decision. What's gonna happen is it'll be closed with written submissions as we're doing with all the applications tonight until, okay. ju until June 3rd. And, that, and then I suspect the decision will be on June 17th. All right, so I, I would assume that this is not part of the application since it's not in the jurisdiction of the town of Southampton. If it's not in the jurisdiction of the town, then, then it is not, okay. not something we can decide. Okay. Yeah. yeah. As, as however, long as the other- However, if we, if we had a choice to decide it, we would, we would, we would vote against the, the metal shed. <laughs> I, I understand. So I guess we have to go before the, the village of Quag and see what they, they feel about it. Yep, yep, that, that's all. Uh, but the, but um, I, I haven't understood the rest of the board's uh, stance on the rest of the variances that we're asking for, the pyramid uh, encroachment and the front yard setbacks on the addition. Well, I can only speak for myself. I don't have an issue with the rest of the relief. Um, I'm, I, it was only the metal shed that I had a, 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 an issue with. Okay. Okay, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Okay, any other questions? Anyone else? Yes, any other any other questions or members of the board? I don't have a problem with it. Keith, you have a problem with it? No, I said I don't. You don't, okay. Okay, anyone else? Okay, um, is there anyone else from the public who is waiting to be heard in connection with the application um, uh, of uh, Danzo uh, for 22 Lakewood Avenue in Esquad? No hands. Okay, no hands. Okay, so I'm on a, on a roll here. I, <laughs> I'm closing this one. Uh, uh, <laughs> written submissions by June 3rd <laughs> and June 17th for decision. Second. Mr. DeSessa. Aye. Mr. Tuthill. Aye. Ms. Kern. Aye. Um, Ms. Burgess. Aye. Mr. Daly. Aye. Mr. Kelly. Aye. Mr. Tsai. Thank you both for your comments. Have a good rest of your night. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Have a good night. Have a good night. Yeah. Okay. All right. Item 15 on the agenda is Viva Group LLC 5 Kings Lane in North Sea 
Suffolk County tax map 900-99-1-51. This is uh, Monica. Is Monica? Um, Maju Majewski? She's coming. She's coming. Okay. Okay. Good evening. Can you see me? Yes. I can see you. We can hear you. It's a long night. Hello. Sure. Good evening. <laughs> We're just, you know, it's how, how it goes. We have <laughs> of long nights. Okay. You... So um, our presentation in April, um, do I have to repeat it or just nope. take it from there? Okay, so so we addressed all the comments from the building department. We meant the elevations diagram to show the pyramid height. We submitted back to the town, which was approved uh, as of this morning, actually, by Dennis O'Rourke. Um, he stumped it off. Um, we did put the... Uh, new calculations on the survey as requested. Um, any questions for, for me? Has anything up? changed? Has anything changed from what, what was advertised? Uh, no, nothing changed. It's all the same. Okay. It was just changes on the survey as far as the pyramid height was concerned. Okay. It wasn't calculated properly, so. So it's a new pyramid amount of relief? No, there's no a pyramid relief. It was just calculated wrong. I see, I see. They, okay. It was the grading issue, yeah. He okay. was using the wrong grade elevation, but. Okay. okay. Great. All right. So I think that was pretty much it um, yeah. in terms of what we were looking for. Any other questions from members of the board? Is there anyone from the public who is waiting to be heard this evening on Zoom in connection with the application of Viva Group LLC? This is for property located at five Kings Lane in North Sea. If, if you want to be heard, this would be the time to let us know by raising your hand. I got a hand. Okay. Howard Horn. Howard, put your video on. There you go. And your audio. Okay, got it. Okay. Uh, good evening, everyone. Long night. Um, good evening, members. Uh, I'm the attorney for the uh, owner of the property. Uh, I wasn't necessarily involved in the zoning application, but um, I have become involved because it got complicated. Uh, as Monica said, uh, we've addressed the three issues that Marjorie had at the last meeting, which is why it was adjourned on April 15th. Um, and uh, the uh, pyramid elevation was amended. The plans matched the survey. Uh, those were all submitted to Dennis O'Rourke, and uh, he stamped off his approval, I believe it was this morning, actually. Um, the, only other the only other issue in the application that I wanted to address is the um, application for uh, relief from, uh, pardon me, um, the single and separate uh, determination. Uh, this property was single and separate until 1962 or 63, and I know that the code requires it to be single and separate since 1957. Um, however, there are other factors involved in uh, granting the variances, the side yards and the rear yards, and I wanted to just address that. If uh, I'm sorry for the length, but I wanted to address that if that's okay. Of course. That okay? Okay. Yep, all good. Okay. Go ahead. So, you know, in, address, in, in determining whether the uh, variances should be granted, I believe the most important thing is the benefit to the owner versus the detriment to the safety and the security and the uh, health of, of the community. And in this case, the application makes perfect sense. It, it, it enhances the community. My client actually brought in uh, uh, fresh water from uh, the main road. 
uh, uh, in, again, enhancing the property. Uh, the only uh, 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 neighbor in the vicinity that's affected by this property at all is to the south. And uh, the, the uh, distance between uh, the new building and the old building that was demolished is exactly the same distance. So we're not, although there is a variance because the building was knocked down, um, there's no, there's no uh, a further encroachment towards the neighbor to the south. Uh, there is no neighbor to the north, or, or at least he's very far away. And then the, uh, there's multiple acres to the uh, west. And then the, of course, the road is on the uh, uh, east. So um, it conforms to the area architecturally. Uh, I think it enhances the area. It increases the tax basis. It, it definitely increases the uh, um, uh, values of the houses because he's planning to build a very nice dwelling uh, with the pool. And uh, uh, that's really what I wanted to just mention to the board. And I think I probably in, the, in the last public hearing, we probably covered the, uh, um, you know, the, the, what we look at in terms of the determination of single and separate status, basically uh, no intent to merge, uh, separate deeds, tax, separate tax map members, um, used separately, not, not used in conjunction with one another. That's pr pretty much what we, what, what Correct. are. I mean, that, that's all accurate. So okay. just wanted to add my two cents. Okay, no problem. All right, well, greatly appreciate it. Um, okay. Any, other, any uh, questions of members of the board? Is there anyone else who is waiting to be heard on Zoom in connection with the application of Viva Group LLC for Five Kings Lane in North Sea? No, oh, yes. is. Okay. If not, Mike, it is yours. We will uh, close this uh, public hearing um, and accept uh, written submissions um, up until June 3rd. Uh, 2021, and we will have a decision at uh, the June 17th meeting. Second. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Um, uh, Mr. Daly. Aye. Mr. DeSessa. Aye. Mr. Tudhill. Aye. Ms. Kern. Aye. Um, Mr. Aye. Kelly. Aye. Ms. Burgess. Aye. Jebatai, thank you both for your comments this evening. Thank, thank you, you very much. much. Have a good, Have a good evening. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Okay, and now we have an amended decision in Sherwood. And I'm recused on this one. So I don't know, uh, maybe, uh, well, I guess we can we can read it. And then um, Katie, can, can you uh, read it? And then we can, uh, yeah. Uh, Brian, yeah. Did you vote? Ready again? If you could read the decision, didn't, please. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, didn't we already do this? We, we, we did, we but did. we didn't have the votes to pass it. So it was withdrawn. Oh, right, 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 right. Because Adam had, re I had forgotten Adam had recused himself. Okay, so we have an That's amended right. decision for the matter of Sherwood, Suffolk County Tax Map number 900-19-1-16 on April 15th, 2021. By decision number D021037, this board granted pyramid and rear yard coverage relief for a proposed two-story dwelling. This decision is being amended to correct a scrivener's error to with the revised date of the survey. Therefore, decision number D021037 is hereby amended to refer to structures as shown on the survey prepared by Joseph Secafico, PC of Colonial Surveying PLS, dated August 15, 2020, last revised February 24, 2021. All other provisions and conditions of this decision remain in full force and effect. Second. Okay, Mr. Tuttle. Aye. Mr. Daly. Aye. I can't see everybody here. Uh, Mr. Flo Mr. Kelly. Aye. Uh, Ms. Spurgis. Aye. Ms. Haberman. Aye. Uh, chair votes aye and Mr. Grossman recuses himself. Thank you. Okay, so we have uh, other decisions. I'm not sure whether anybody else has decisions to read before I get started. We're waiting for you. Adam. Okay, then I'll get started. I have one, yeah. but I'll wait for you. Go yeah. ahead. Okay, okay. Um, so uh, we have a couple of amendments. Uh, first one is the application of Robert Crabb for property located at Suffolk County Tax Rent Number 931 136 
on April 1st, 2021, by decision number D021030, this board granted variances in connection with a three-story dwelling. This decision is being amended to correct a scrivener's error to wit, the revised date of the survey. Therefore, decision number D021030 is hereby amended to refer to structures as shown on the survey prepared by Lester Holden, Aspires, Holden, Weisenbacher, and Smith, surveyed April 11th, 2013, last revised April 9th, 2020. This is 2020 or 2021? Uh, this is for crab? Crab. This one make absolutely sure. Mm, it could I be 2020. It, oh, it's, it's 2020 because the decision was on April 1st. <laughs> okay, very, very good. Just want to make up. Well, the decision was April 1st, 2021. Yes, correct, correct. Okay. Yeah. All of the provisions of the decision, this decision remain in full force and effect. Do we have a second? Second. Ms. Burgess. Aye. Ms. Kern. Aye. Ms. Kelly. Aye. Mr. Daly. Aye. Ms. Tuthill. Aye. Mr. DeSessa. Aye. Mr. Mossad. I next have a determination in the matter of the application of 65 Hill <laughs> Drive. This is the property located at Suffolk County Tax Rent Number 909118.1. On May 6, 2021, by decision number D021043, this board granted variances in connection with a proposed dwelling. This decision is being amended to correct a scrivener's error to wit a condition requiring any necessary approvals for a pergola slash swing on the premises. As no such structures exist, decision number D021043 is hereby amended to delete this reference. All other provisions of this decision remain in full force and effect. Second. Ms. Burtis. Aye. Mr. Tuthill. Aye. Ms. Kern. Aye. Mr. Daly. Aye. Mr. Kelly. Aye. Mr. DeSessa. Aye. Chair votes aye. Next, I have a determination in the minor application of Baycrest 2 LLC. This is property located at Suffolk County Tax Act number 900-358-227.2. This is a minor application for a variance for a proposed covered porch a covered patio addition to an existing dwelling for property located at 38A Baycrest Avenue, West Hampton. The application passes the standards set forth in New York State Town Law and the Southampton Town Code. Therefore, this board grants relief to the applicant from Town Code Section 33011, Residential District's Table of Dimensional Regulations, for a principal rear yard setback of 54.2 feet or 70 feet as required. The structures as shown on the plans prepared by Salvatore Iannone Jr. Architect dated June 6, 2020, and the survey prepared by David H. Fox Surveyor dated February 11, 2021. Granted to the foregoing relief to subject to such other conditions and permits as applicants have already acquired or may otherwise have to acquire for final approval of the subject premises. Second. Second. Um, who, who seconded it first? <laughs> well, Helen did, okay. Uh, Ms. Burgess. Aye. Uh, Mr. Tothill. Aye. Mr. Daly. Aye. Mr. Kelly. I am recused on this application. Okay. Ms. Kern. Aye. Ms. Burgess. I already said aye. You already did. Oh, yeah. Ms. Mr. DeSessa. Aye. <laughs> sure about aye. Okay. <laughs> All right. Next, the decision on the matter of the application of Stuart Boski. Located at Suffolk County Tax Act number 900 178117.80. This application is for property located at 703 Flying Point Road, Watermill. The applicant seeks variances in connection with a two-lot subdivision to divide a property that benefits from a non-conforming use of two dwellings. The application passes the standards set forth in New York State Town Law and the Southampton Town Code. Therefore, this board grants relief from the following provisions of the Town Code for a proposed two-lot subdivision. For proposed lot one, one, Town Code 33011, Residential District's Table of Dimensional Regulations, for a lot area of 29,292 square feet, where 80,000 square feet is required. A lot width of 143.8 feet, where 175 feet is required. And a total lot coverage of 12.3%, where a maximum of 10% is permitted. And two, Town Code 330.115C, continuous, for a principal front yard setback of 60 feet, where 61.6 .6 feet is existing. And for proposed lot two, relief from Town Code 33011, for a lot area of 45,174 square feet, where 80,000 square feet is required, 
as shown in the survey prepared by Squires, Holden, Weisenbacher, and Smith, last revised May 6, 2021. Granted that the foregoing relief is subject to such other conditions and permits as applicant has already acquired or may otherwise have to acquire for final approval of the subject premises. Second. Mr. DeSassa. Aye. Mr. Tuthill. Aye. Ms. Daly. Aye. Um, Mr. Kelly. Aye. Ms. Burgess. Aye. Ms. Kern. Abstain. Chair votes aye. And the last one I have for tonight is the application of uh, Patrick Bradley. This is for property located at Suffolk County Tax Act number 900 4, uh, 343 127. This modification request is for property located at 18 Sandpiper Lane, East Quad. Applicant here requested to sub substitute a survey reference in a previous variance in order to keep an existing driveway. Under this set of facts and circumstances, this board finds that allowing the circular driveway to remain will not have an, any impact on the character of the neighborhood. However, this board is not inclined to grant any variances for additional parking in the front yard. Therefore, this board amends ZBA decision number D109143 to allow the driveway configuration to remain as shown on a driveway drawing prepared by Todd O'Connell of Todd O'Connell Architects, Architect PC, last dated May 18, 2021, conditioned upon compliance with the town code as it relates to parking. Currently, the house boasts four bedrooms, so the required parking allows for two spaces in the two-car garage and one in the driveway. All other provisions of this decision remain in full force and effect. One second, one second. The decision is D019. Oh, okay. So D's, so the decision is D019. Oh, oh, I see 19, not, not, not 91. Katie, I want to make D sure I have this decision right. Can you just re read it? What D exactly? Yep. D019143. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Sorry. Do we have a second? Second. Ms. Kern. Aye. Uh, Mr. Tuthill. Nope. Uh, Mr. Daly. Aye. Um, Mr. Kelly. Aye. Ms. Burgess. No. Mr. DeSassa. Aye. Chair votes aye. Okay, a decision in the matter of the application of Two Pecana Crescent LLC, property located at Two Pecana Crescent, Tuckahoe, tax map 900 191 4, lot 11. Um, what are we reading here? The owner's wish to construct a two story home with a garage, pool, and related structures. The subject premises fronts multiple roads and is burdened by wetlands, and as such, has a very challenged building envelope. They have met the five part test, therefore. For the reasons set forth herein, this board grants relief from town code 330-76D, placement of accessory building structures and uses in all districts, and 330-83C yards to allow a proposed swimming pool to be located within the required minimum side yard for the principal building on a non-conforming lot for structures shown on a survey prepared by Fox Land Surveying, last revised March 30th, 2021, and plans and elevations prepared by Michael James Palladino, architect, PC, dated May 20th, 2021. The relief is granted subject to the owner maintaining the vegetated buffer as shown on said survey, along with screening between the pool and the northerly record line. The granting of this relief is subject to the conditions of such other permits as the applicant has already acquired or may otherwise have to acquire for final approval of the structures on the subject premises. Second. Mr. Kelly. Aye. Mr. Tuthill. Aye. Mr. Daly. Aye. Ms. Kern. Aye. Ms. Burgess. Aye. Mr. DeSassa. Aye. Chair votes aye. I think we're done. Motion to close. Second. 